Hello, everybody. Hello, Ruel. Please work. Hello, Richard. I know. Please, fingers crossed. Uh, folks, please confirm in chat if you can see and or hear us. Yes. Um, we're just jumping. You know, it's it's Monday. We're not used to doing it on a Monday, no. so things are just, you know, being a little wacky. So if y'all can uh, confirm, that that would be great. Yep. Um, people are saying hello, Kabuki Kid, Old Gave Man Coaster. Excellent. All Wonderful. right. Cool. Yes. Good. That's that's what we're waiting for. Yeah. Uh, you'll forgive wow. me if I'm a little jittery today because uh, we got to be out of here by two, or PST at the latest, because Jen and I have got a bolt to the airport to hop a plane to Vegas for Dice Tower West. You are driving, I think, tomorrow. Is that I am. Right? Um, yeah, so I'll be driving sometime, probably right around lunchtime, maybe a little before, because I think check-in at the hotel is at 3, and from my house to Vegas, it's about a, I call it about a four-hour drive, but I, I can, I've done it in three, but, you know, there's always traffic and maybe a pit stop uh, along the way, yeah. but it, it's, it's not too bad of a drive. I've done it pretty much all my life, and I'm living in Southern California, Vegas has always been pretty, pretty close by for us, so... I'm looking forward to it. How, is, how long is the flight from where you're at? I don't know. It's a couple of hours, two or three hours, I guess. Oh, somebody uh, okay, NASCAR that's, said I was a little quiet. Okay, I'm bumping myself up a bit, bumping Ruel okay. down a bit. Uh, hopefully that'll Again, all work my out. big mouth. Yep, 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 yep. yep. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. interesting. I, I think I have to artificially lower you below me because you just, you, psychologically, you sound louder than me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's because of that bass. I don't know why... Maybe it's the bass. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's all about the bass. Is that is the one song uh, said? So, yep. and so you got to get on. You you got to drive to the airport. That takes a little while. Then you have to get on the plane, go through all TSA and all that stuff. So you've got a hectic couple of hours coming up right oh, after the show. Oh yeah, and I don't know yeah. what I was thinking. Saying hey, we can do it on Monday <laughs> instead of Tuesday, and we don't have to miss a week. It'll all go <laughs> great. Everything will be fine. No problems whatsoever. Um, and of course, I decide this, we decided this, what, two weeks ago, and then wouldn't yeah. you know, like half of the um, Kickstarter games that I've been waiting to show up in the mail and cover all show up like on freaking Friday. So oh, no. <laughs> Jen and I have this absolutely ridiculous marathon weekend of playing and filming games. Uh, I did four run-throughs wow. this weekend. I'm completely trashed. Um, oh my you know, I had to make one live this morning, and so that cut into all of our planning time. And uh, and then we're, we're still doing this, and boy, it'll be fine. Uh, we'll get there. Yeah. We'll get there. As yeah. long as we catch that yeah. plane, everything exactly. will be fine. Um, I'm assuming you're all packed up, ready no, to go. You no, 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 I'm not. And I'm no. not at all. Oh. Nor have I shaved. Oh I had intended to uh, shower and shave this morning. I'm going to have to do that at the wow. hotel when we get there. Uh, which Jen oh says gosh. is fine because she always wants to shower after a plane ride anyway because she wants to get the plane off her. And me, I you don't know, really I'm, care. I'm, so she's like, oh, I'm you're disgusting. Way. Get away from me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the same way. I go on a plane for even just a short amount of time. Like the first thing I want to do at the hotel is just rinse off, you know, and clean up. Uh, so I, I get that. Yep. Um, anyways, uh, friends, thank you for joining yeah, us. Yeah, hi, everybody. In the the RR pre show. Yeah. We're hanging out, chatting with y'all. Let's see. Hey, well, while I say hello to everybody, why don't you confirm, because we didn't do it in the pre pre show, which is just you and me, yeah. that your banner is working, because that would be nice. Uh, okay. It'd be nice if something works. And meanwhile, I will just go backwards and say hello, Armor, hello, Gator, hello, Kabuki, hello, Feld fan, or fellow Feld fan, Triple F, hello, Wesseloid, and Dungeon Sound System, and Fidelia, and Mike Stradamus, and Nazgoth, and Old Man Coaster, Andrew Carite, aka the Car Carolite. Uh, oh, Priscilla <laughs> is back again, one of my fave people, Gizmo, and uh, Jorgens the first. Uh, we'd never speak of the second or the third. Big Bad Lex, we got the best. We got the first one. <laughs> Empress Barrer. And scrolling back more, I think I've gotten everybody so far. Yes, it looks like going all the way back up to the top. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Okay. Welcome to the show. Thanks for showing up. Um, we're going to try and... to be on point today. We do not have as much time to goof around as yeah. we normally do, I'm afraid. Um, yeah. I, uh, and I just checked uh, my banner. I just typed in hello. And it's hello? There now. So Yay. Hello. Okay, cool, it Looks cool, like cool. it's working. Yep. Okay, so uh, let me the put banner's the, working. Pre -show back up. I got my links. You got your links. I've got my yeah. Lord of the Board shirt. This is it uh, for the month I was wearing um, uh, oh. Sam's shirt. I'm retiring nice. it today. So this will be the last <laughs> time you see this shirt for a while. And that's good because I haven't washed it all month. 
uh, quite frankly. <laughs> Are you going to wear it on the plane? <laughs> no, no, I am not. Uh, starting next month, I'm um, uh, switching over to Our Family Plays Games. This showed up oh, in the mail. I love, I this, love shirt. this shirt. Uh, yes. Best Sobel Art. Actually, the month mm. of February was going to be switching over to Thinker Themer, as I got I ordered one of their oh. shirts as well. Uh, here's a warning for you, well, if you ever uh, try to get uh, show merchandise off of uh, their website, double uh-huh. check. When you say, oh, extra large, please, this is an extra large European, it says here. Oh. And for US, it says large. This is very ah. form fitting. This is not a very okay. flattering shirt to wear at this point, unfortunately. <laughs> So, uh, so it'll be. I didn't uh, know that. I didn't know that Euro sizes uh, were smaller than U.S. sizes. I, I lived in Europe for over a decade. I didn't realize yeah. that, and so I, I did not read the small print. So I've got to get another okay. uh, Thinker Themer shirt for uh, April, it, March. Know. I'll be rocking the Our Family Plays games, and uh, then we'll nice. see where it goes from there. Good to know. Um, I just want to remind everyone in chat that yes, we talked about it earlier, but we are both going to be at Dice Tower yeah, West you should this mention. week, folks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so starting uh, Wednesday, we'll be there. Um, uh, you'll be there t- uh, tonight. I'll be there tomorrow. Uh, but Wednesday, the official convention starts until Sunday. Uh, we're going to be there. Uh, find uh, Richard at uh, d- uh, your wife Jen's booth, um, uh, Gamer Glass uh, booth. Um, and I'll be at the 3 Con area, folks. That's the Content Creator Community Convention. It's a convention within a convention. I'll be there with a bunch of other uh, creators and, you know, just... If he's happy to see me, uh, you know, I don't bite, say hello. You know, I, I would love to meet y'all. <laughs> so you're saying um, you're going to be um, easy to find, basically. I'll be super easy yeah, to find. Yeah, because you're running that place. And Yeah. And folks, if you see me, feel free to ask me for a tabletop tonight button. Uh, Michelle and I, we actually got a button maker. We made a, a hun- about over 100 buttons we want to give away. So it's just a little tabletop tonight logo, and we'd love to share it with y'all. So uh, feel free to stop stop me and uh, say, hey, uh, I mean, ask me nicely. Say, may I have a button? I, I, I will gladly give you a button, friends. All right. No secret handshakes or anything like that to prove that there are no, an R fans no. or something. Yeah, with the whole pandemic thing, we're, we're going to stay away from the handshake stuff. Well, I'll, I'll give you an air high five, folks. <laughs> I see. Um, I see Nazgoth asked, do we have any live events planned? And it just so happens we do. Great question. Yeah, we do have uh, an R&R show happening live on Friday at the convention. So you'll see that on the Dice Tower West uh, website. They have a scheduling um, app. Uh, on the web and you can just click on there and look under events and um, you'll see the R&R show. Um, and uh, that is this Friday. So if you're there, we'd love it if you uh, come on in and uh, come on over to the uh, panel or the uh, panel room or whatever and uh, uh, check out the show live. I'll be a little less cool cucumber than Will and say, please, if you're there, please come by. We don't want to have to do the show in an empty room. That'd be very sad. <laughs> we got to impress the folks that, uh, that yeah, we can fill beg. a room. Okay, I, I'm, I'm not above begging, so please, folks, come on <laughs> down. <laughs> Tell you what, if you come down to the show, I will give you a button. How about a little bribery? Buttons for buttons everybody who attends buttons the show. Buttons for everyone. Wow. Oh. Uh, it's it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Have you been to a convention lately, Richard? I'm sure it's I, been a while, uh, right? Jen and I went to the uh, Board Game Geek uh, oh, that's convention right. in Dallas yeah. back in November. Had a great time. Um, nice. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to this, too. But I don't know, man. I'm thinking this might be our last convention for a while. It's just yeah. so stressful, um, you know, for her because you know she is yeah. running a booth. And I think I mentioned this in the past that Jen is getting more and more success selling her GamerGlass.art on Facebook than ever before. Right. Yeah. And it right. used to be her doing a game convention and selling GamerGlass was a big part of her yearly, uh, you know, take. But now that she's doing so on Facebook, it maybe doesn't make as much sense to keep stressing ourselves out to numbing. I mean, once we get there and everything's set up, it's usually pretty smooth sailing. But in the, yeah. the days and weeks leading up, including right now, I'm still kind of buzzing from stress because I know there's still a half a dozen things I got to do before we uh, uh, get a, uh, not an Uber. What's the other one? Um, Lyft. Lyft. Lyft, yes, a Lyft. I don't yeah. know. Should we use Uber, Uber over Lyft? All I know is I used, I, I looked at both once years ago and Lyft was clearly yeah. cheaper. So I've just been going with Lyft ever since. I guess they're yeah, both evil going, companies when it boils right down to it. They, they are, yeah. yeah. I think you, it's like the lesser of two evils, so we go with Lyft as well. Uh, it's, I think they're about the same price these days, but I, I know like Uber had those all those problems with their, their like um, corporate culture and everything like that, and mm-hmm. um, so we went to Lyft. But I'm, I'm sure Lyft's no no better. But you no, know, you, you choose what you choose these days. Yep, yep, you know, yep. It's all good. Let's see, Clydeman. Yeah. Thanks for resubscribing. Fidelia. Thanks for resubscribing. Retsum. Oh, well, that was from three days ago. 
But thank you for resubscribing. I guess that happened automatically offline. And then I think, okay, we're back to where we were a week ago. Getting ever closer to another RVR. We're at 31. We need to hit 49 subscribers. And uh, nice. what will we do? What will we do? Haven't, oh, I, I know. know what we'll do. Because you know what showed up in the mail? Huh. What showed up in the mail? All oh, three sisters showed three up. Three sisters yes. showed up in the mail the yes. other day. Yes. Awesome. I yeah. cannot wait to play it. And and you, and I believe you said that's a bingo East type game, right? So that's something we could play with the audience. You, we we can totally play with the audience. Yes. Yep. Yes. yes. Right. So we need <laughs> we need um what uh, 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 uh eighteen more subscribers, folks, uh to be able to for you and me and uh, Ruel to play some three sisters uh in the month of March. I'd be very excited to do that. And by the way, That'd speaking of subscribers, did you know that if you're an Amazon Prime subscriber, you can subscribe to this channel and avoid all ads totally for free. It's true. Uh take five dollars directly out of the pocket of Jeff Bezos and put it in our pockets. And you won't have to watch ads and you get discounts on merch and you get a stream avatar and you get um you know secret hints as to where the uh, secret word is. Hey, speaking of secret word, how about we give something away? Shall we do that? Let's do that. Yeah. That sounds like you know. I, I was just so uh, I was just so mesmerized by your vacuum cleaner um, <laughs> salesman voice right there. That was perfect. That was a great great way to get into it. Oh, um, yep, Kabuki yep. Kid just uh, mentioned: Do towns even have local cab companies anymore? That's a great question. I don't know. Like I I don't know if I can call a cab in my town. Maybe really. Oh, I mean, I, I I'm sure I could get a cab to the airport. Um, yeah. Which and it, I, it, I guess so. Yeah, and it would be expensive. It's. I mean, gosh, it's almost a forty-minute drive to the airport. Um, you know, on a oh, wow. on a smooth okay, day. Yeah. So it's a uh, it's spendy, and I can't even imagine how much a cab would be. Again, like you said, lesser of two evils. Um, yep, yep. So what to make the world go round? Okay, I'm just doing one last double check, and it looks like the last entry was Benjamin Chu, who uh, entered a. Um, yep, yep. I got him on the list. Okay, I am closing down Outlook. Entries for the contest are finished. So. Let me bring up the wheel. All right. That's not the wheel. That's the uh, game that's on my table, which will be uh, doing it. Oh, but wait! Toot toot! Did I hear a hype train pull into the station? Oh, yeah! <laughs> All right. I love that train. Yeah. That's I, so I need to watch this train. I need to study it. I don't know exactly how it works. But Wes Lloyd, who just subscribed, thank you, Wes Lloyd, put us over the top. He's in the front seat of the train. I see Clyde Man and... Um, <laughs> You know, I need to make that train bigger. Can I make that bigger? Am I going to mess with that? So Am I gonna... Is there a way that you uh, you can make your avatar go on the train, or is this just random? No, this is, I mean, the avatars have absolutely nothing to do with this train. This train is just oh, a okay. little, oh, I still need to be overhead. I needed to go to the, uh... yeah, there it is. Um, yeah, the, uh, I, I found this train thing because I just wanted to have some kind of event. It's so weird. Stream labs, stream elements, nobody makes any kind of event system to say when a hype train starts. This is the only thing in huh. the entire internet I could find. And it is adorable, and it is really cool that if more okay. people contribute to the hype with bits or with subscribing, um, then they will actually get, they will physically get on the train, and they will drag the <laughs> hype train out. So that's all really neat. But, um, oh, uh, no caboose, says Kabuki Kid. So this train uh. fails. It is of no value to Kabuki whatsoever. <laughs> all right. But um, let's see here. I've got the wheel. We are going to spin it. And we are going right. to see what we will see. This is a uh, $50 everybody. gift certificate for Front Again Games. For all 50 of the marbles. Who gets it? It is Jason Price. I'm so sorry, Cadillac. You just missed it, Cadillac. It was so close. <laughs> but Jason snatched it away from you. And Jason, Congrats, I will be contacting Jason. you after the show uh, to talk about the uh, particulars. Get your info. Get it on to fun again so that you can start buying, buying, buying all the latest goodness. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. And oh, and uh, oh. and meanwhile, thank. Uh, I just I thought I heard somebody did something. I heard a voice in my ear hang in there loading activity oh priscilla uh thank you for subscribing yay i hopefully you enjoy it in a few minutes you should have a little avatar walking around down there that you can walk around and hug everybody or fight everybody or just jump and dance and all kinds of stuff and you yeah. shouldn't see ads for another month and we are one step closer um 34 now 
Only getting to four. We just need to get to 49. Nice. And of course, nice. also, um, thank you for everybody who is following the show as well. There's another uh, progress thing for that that will get us to unlocking a top 10 that I will do with audience participation. And we're a ways off from unlocking another run through. I mean, I think every once in a while somebody buys some Rotto merch and then that throws 10 bucks on. And so we get a big jump. So I, mm. we'll, we'll probably get to there in a few months and we'll unlock a bonus run through okay. as well, which again, I will stream live so folks can see all the behind the scenes shenanigans that we get up to but huge nice. okay All right and yay oh. indeed priscilla yay indeed okay so cool. let me see do uh, we have any outstanding things we need to do you read my mind i think we had a was it a top three or something we do or was it a uh, six okay. days ago duck of death requested a top three duck of death you are going to get your top three. We are now spontaneously going to come up with, off the top of our heads, the most definitive um, ranking of, <laughs> of top three of something that the world has ever seen. But we need you folks to suggest some stuff. What would you like us to top three today? Uh, you know, it could be... Usually people tend to like the game-related stuff, but um, yeah. it could be... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, I mean, it could be anything. Uh, yeah. Throw a few at us. We'll put them in a poll. You'll choose, and then we will do a top three. So, uh, right. what, cool. what what are they what are they suggesting? I gotta start making. Well, a so poll. far, uh, Duck of Death uh, was the first one to say uh, top three time travel movies. Interesting. Okay. All right, time like travel that. movies. All right, we need okay. three to choose from the top three. Okay, uh, we also have uh, this one from Nazgoth. Top three new games Tom Tom is wrong about. <laughs> oh, no. Uh -oh. If we put Someone's that on, that's what's going to get it. Pot. And there's no reason to have anything else about. Yeah. Oh, no, it can't quite fit because there's a very short... All right, should we put that on? Uh, uh, your call. Tom. Here's one from Peaceful Dragon. All right. Top three games to play with the mother-in-law. Interesting. Uh, Mom-in-law games. All right. Tom, if we put Tom is wrong on there, that it's going to get ninety-seven percent of the vote. That's what's I, going I to feel, happen. Yeah, and yeah, um, and yeah. we are both going to Tom's convention today or tomorrow. Yeah, so maybe uh, I, maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll save, save that. that. We'll put that date. in your pocket. Maybe come back to that yeah. in a few weeks. Do we have yeah. a third suggestion, perhaps? Yeah, here here's uh, top three required expansions. Okay, like that, uh, that, re that uh, required. Yeah. Expansions. All right. Top three. Time travel movies, mom and law games, and required expansions. You tell us, folks, what should we um, right. come up with as the definitive once and for all uh, breakdown yeah. of those? You, you have, have two, two minutes, minutes folks. to vote. Two minutes to vote, and you can spend those Rotto channel points to influence the votes as well. So, I, and I'm wondering if people are going to wait till the last second again, like last time, and just pour all kinds of votes. Yep, in. yep, yep, Maybe yep. Because they think they're bidding for something on eBay. Yeah. Well, uh, Mob and Law Games has no votes yet. Okay. <laughs> it has one. I, because in all honesty, that would be the easiest one to do, I think. Um, yeah. The, because been, I, I played a lot of games with my mother-in-law, or my, I should say my stepmother-in-law. Uh, and and, okay. and a few games with my mother-in-law too. So I, 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 I mean, I, I'll just have to do yeah. just think of the games I played with her. So that's yeah. cool. Yeah. I don't think I've played uh, many games with my mother-in-law, but I can think of games that uh, she would like. Um, time travel movies or required expansions. Okay. Gosh, the time travel one's going to be tough for me. No, I've got, I've got a couple. Yeah, I've got a couple. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, I, I mean, I think there's like close? one, ob there's like one obvious time travel movie that's going to be on there that I think we both hit. The other yeah. two. So it's really, you know? uh, number two and number three time travel movies is what it really Pretty is. Pretty much. Which yeah. is fine. Which is fine. Yeah. I mean, we, okay. we do need to be definitive, uh, so. Yeah, then required expansions. Wow, I can think of one off the top of my head. Must have expansions. I can think of one off the top of my head because I just reviewed it. It's one of the re ones I recently did. I mean, actually, I can. I think I, I can think of two. Know. Yeah. All right. I know of one that I know it's probably going to be required for me. But I haven't even played. So far, games, there's still I, I only just... one vote for Mom and Law Games, and that was me. <laughs> No, uh, no one wants Mom and Law Games. Even the person who suggested it isn't voting for it. <laughs> we got 10 seconds, folks. Throw in those channel points. Let's see what happens. What if there's a tie? Uh, we're, it's actually pretty close. It could be. Okay, there's there's Mom and Law Games. Okay, making a little comeback. Thanks, everybody. But too late. So it what is one? time travel movies. Normally, games win it pretty handily. But okay, so obviously, number one is, of course, uh, Back to the future. Time Bandits. <laughs> Time back. <laughs> that was gonna be my one, one of my. But I, I think, I think definitively, like, don't you think 
Back to Future's got to be like V one. I think it. I mean, I mean, I, I think we'd be laughed out of the room if 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 that didn't happen. If we yeah, didn't it has that. to be. So yeah. that's a given. Yeah. Back to the Future. Yeah. For the longest time, I mean, I mean I, Back to the Future still oscillates in my top ten films of all time. Quite frankly, sometimes yeah. it, it falls yeah. out, but then something reminds me of how much I love it, and it falls right back in. So obviously, so the yeah. number two and the number three. Now, yeah. um, and I did throw, hmm. I mean, Time Bandits, I was just joking. Just It was the first thing I could think of other than uh, back, but do you want to suggest Time Bandits? I mean, it is certainly I, I a wonderful, it, yeah. quirky, just strange, strange movie that pushes time travel as yeah. hard as it can. But there are yeah. so many. Um, because, of course, so you got to talk about Bill about. and Ted as well. Uh, yep. you got to talk yep. about Time After Time from the 70s. Oh, wow. You know, time After Time? Yeah. Uh, Which one was Jack that the, Jack, uh, Jack the Ripper. Um, you know, yeah, yeah. travels to That's 1970s right. London, chased by H.G. Right. Wells. Um, H. G. in H.G. Wells, because it turns out H.G. Wells's time machine what was autobiographical. Was like, um, right, you know, right. I mean, that movie oh. is fantastic. And if I recall correctly, it's directed by Nicholas Meyer, the same director of Star Trek: Wrath of Khan and Star Trek: Undiscovered Country, to revisit a previous wow. R and argument. Although speaking of wow. Star Trek, of course you got to talk about um, Star Trek IV: Voy- Voyage Home, yep. right? Yeah, um, yeah. And I was thinking uh, uh, Avengers Endgame, which is basically a time travel heist. <gasps> oh, right? of course it is. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> I well, okay, that then I'm sorry. List. I have to take a step back. Uh, I, I First of all, I propose Endgame is the greatest time travel movie of all time, and it bumps wow. Back to the Future. Wow. I, You know what? I'm... Oh, man. I mean, Endgame was phenomenal. Uh, it was phenomenal. Endgame and, is literally um, my number one. My I'm not going to say it's the greatest movie in cinematic history, but it is my favorite movie. Yeah. It is my personal Your number one movie. of all time. I can't imagine yeah. it ever being supplanted. So, And, it's, and yeah. it's also an absolutely phenomenal time travel movie that has, yeah. to be fair, an unfair advantage because, you know, time travel movies, you know, they get a lot of mileage out of, oh, we're going to historical things that mean something to us because we read about them in a history book. In Endgame... They were actually traveling through our lives. They were traveling yeah. through 10 years of their own self-contained history that tracks all these movies that we've been watching. It is, I mean, I think it is so much more immediate and meaningful to the audience, or at least to a hardcore Marvel audience. Um, you know, that, and it revealed yeah. stuff that we hadn't seen before in the other movies. Yeah, and um, and it's just, and oh, and also, the past the resistance, why it has to be, it's, it can't be the only time travel movie that really does it. I mean, to be fair, I mean, obviously Back to the Future is awesome, but it's ridiculous yep. that, oh, his, right, yeah. all you can see is his hand and it's fading away. And it's like, how that makes no sense. That's just a weird, there's nothing. I mean, whereas yeah, yeah. Endgame is really much more hard science compared to pretty much any other time travel game out or movie out there because it acknowledges, yeah. right, okay, real time travel just creates alternate branching timelines with, you know, the multi-use theory yeah. or multi-universe theory. Um, it, it, it has to be done via the quantum universe. That's really our only means to do it. So, I mean, yeah. yes, it's a silly over-the-top thing too, but it's got stronger science for the reality of time travel than anybody else. It's got a more personal, impactful story. Yeah, it's number one. And I will fight you. Yeah. This will become an R argument if you don't agree. <laughs> I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna agree with you because, I, I, and here's where the I think Avengers Endgame has the advantage because it was the last of this entire phase one of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Exactly. So you had so much to build mm-hmm. on, you know. Whereas Back to the Future, that was like, you know, I mean, not one and done. It, it, it did eventually lead on to a trilogy, which, for some, I mean, I like some of the rest of the trilogy. I don't really like other parts of it. But Avengers Endgame, I mean, it was, I, I can I can easily make a case for it being the number one as well. Um, we, we just had so much invested in those characters. Yeah. And as you were saying, it's a little more hard science than the other ones. Yeah, yeah. And it was just it was just so well done and just, you know, w- with how emotionally invested we Who were. Who came up with this characters. topic? There are too many things. Too many things for I know, a top right? three. <laughs> um, because, yeah, I mean, the audience, I mean, Kabuki mentions Edge of Tomorrow. I would, I mean, mm. and Looper. I mean, those are both, you know, oh, Looper, uh, you know time yeah. loopy type stories. Twelve Monkeys. Yeah. Um, geez, Louise. Uh, oh, 12 Monkeys. I feel like 12 Monkeys got to be up there. I think it's got to be up there. That's such a good movie. Oh, uh, I like, uh, uh, uh Dwalt says Quantum Leap. Nice try, pal, but it did not make it to theatrical yeah. films. But, oh. Yeah. I, 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 I okay, uh, Kabuki mentioned one that I'm not even going to mention because it's kind of a spoiler, so I'm just going to skip over that one. Um... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, okay, I don't see anybody uh, mentioning one, and I can't remember the name of it. I'm sure either you or somebody in the audience remember it. There is, speaking of hardcore, hard science, science fiction, there was a little independent movie that was about a couple of guys who figured out how to do uh, time travel, 
um, or basically figured out how to create time travel and it pretty much destroys their lives in ways that I would not want to spoil a single frame of this movie. Primer, wow. Flashburn 2012 knows what I'm talking about and Kabuki. Have you seen Primer? I've not seen Primer, no. It is, if you have seen Primer, it would be impossible for you to argue against that this is not one of the three greatest films that just happens to feature time travel. Wow, okay. It's on my must-watch list it now. Is. It is, it is. And um, yo, it is the hardest of hard science. It digs deep into what it means to do time travel, not in a crazy, fantastical way. I mean, because the whole thing mm -hmm. is, it's just a couple of guys doing it in a garage. And trying oh, to take advantage okay. of it, and things start to happen, and things get out of control. Um, as Dwalt says, if you watch Primer, guaranteed, after it is over, you will say, I'm very confused. And you should be. Oh. A proper time. <laughs> and you will either want to watch it again, or you will want to go to one of the many websites that are devoted to disentangling it. I mean, uh, Primer okay. is basically, huh. uh, you know... A, uh, oh, what would you call it? Uh, I can't think of the director of Inception. Um, Christopher Nolan. A, a Christopher Nolan, a cubed, or, you know, whatever, um, you know, a hundred is, wow. you know, deck tuple. Really? In terms of depth and complexity and confusion okay. and what the hell's going on there. Um, of course, we do have to talk also about Christopher Nolan's most recent film. Yeah. Um, what was it, uh... The I fact mean, that neither of us can remember it off the top of our head means it's strict from the list. Although it was absolutely amazing. Yeah. All I can think of is now is Inception. It, uh, Tenet. Tenet. I, keep thinking, I keep thinking Inception. Yeah. Oh, Tenet. No. Tenet, I, I which is wait, it's a palindrome because it. it's both, both ways and that's all part of it. Right. I mean, that's a brilliant movie too, but you know, I yeah. wouldn't put it on the list just because of the sound mix, quite frankly. I mean... <laughs> you know, that's you're the second person that said that. Someone told me the first time you see it, you have to watch it with subtitles because you can't even hear anything. The f I'm lucky. The first time I watched it, um, it was late at night. Jen was asleep, so I was using really good headphones and I didn't have a problem. Okay. The second time I okay. watched it with Jen and my mom... We had to pause a lot, and what, what did he say? What was that? And okay. um, I don't think we ever turned on subtitles, but I had seen it, so I kind of knew. Okay. Yeah. You know, and uh, these days I tend to watch movies with subtitles anyways. I my, You know, it's just easier for me these days to um, not have to worry about the sound mix. Yep. So, so what this are we is a with? communal got... thing. I'm not going to put Primer on because you haven't seen it. Um, yeah. But I strongly well, got... recommend it, folks. It's amazing. We definitely have Avengers Endgame on there. Yep. We definitely and have Back, Back to, to the Future. future so we're really there. just talking about number three. And of course, yeah. it's Hot Tub Time Machine. Obviously. That goes without saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, someone mentioned I, I don't know I saw the, uh, there's something called Somewhere in Time there was that old Christopher Reeve oh Christopher movie, Reeve um, romantic yeah. um, or, or, you know, yes. romance drama yeah uh, that is yeah. A, that is a lovely beautiful film um, yeah. oh I totally forgot the Dwalzi yeah th this is this is on, definitely on my list what's that Terminator come on Terminator <laughs> <laughs> like great movies of all time and that's all about time travel come on it, it, it's all it wants... about it but it's not about it at all I mean I mean, we, the audience, from, don't travel the in future. Time. <laughs> and then they start messing with time in the, uh, in the sequels and stuff. You are, know, are you wanting to put July. the sequels on the list? I don't think so. Uh, well, I could... Uh, Terminator 2 is arguably the better movie of the uh, first two Terminators. Sure, sure, sure. Think. And, you know, uh, yeah, and uh, I mean, one quick scene of coming in and... and, and yeah, yeah. I, 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 Terminator 2 I, I is certainly you. one of the best movies we talked about, but it is not... It's barely, yeah. just barely. It's, it's time travel adjacent. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd probably agree with that. I just want Terminator on the list. Um, Voyage Home? I'm okay with Voyage I Home. I am, I mean, but... the only reason I'm hesitant to do is because, I mean, it. I, I feel kind of too geeky. We're starting with Avengers Endgame. We're going to Back to the <laughs> yeah. Future. It feels like we should have something yeah. a little bit more classy, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, Time Cop. <laughs> 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 well, yes, we need the muscles from Brussels on this list. Folks. Yeah, it's we all about the split. I mean, do any of these films have that split? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness they don't. <laughs> um, you know what? I mean, you were really hot uh, on Twelve Monkeys, and I would be totally down with Twelve Monkeys. Yeah, that's a, remember, it's an just, amazing. I, I love how they. Yeah, yeah, that that movie. How it, it really gave you that red herring. You know, like you're watching this movie, and all of a sudden it just flips on you. It's like, wait, this is not what I thought I was watching. I love that about that movie. Brad Pitt was phenomenal. Bruce Willis. I mean, hey, Bruce Willis. I'm okay with that. You know. Yeah. Okay. That was in his. That was in his prime. Yep. You know? Yep. 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 All right. It's and prime it's, uh, Willis. What's his name? Terry Gilliam, right? Terry yeah. Of course. Gilliam, directed uh, by Tom. It's it's prime uh, yeah. uh, Willis. It's prime Pitt. It's prime Gilliam. 
It's it's yeah. triple prime. Right. We can't not yeah. put it on the list. So it's got to be on the list. Yeah, let's let's there do it. it. So number one, Avengers Endgame. Number two, Back to the Future. Number three, Twelve Monkeys. I'm I I, I dig that list. I, I'm I pretty like com- I'm pretty comfortable with that list. Yeah. And a little uh, honorable mention to a time cop in those splits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. We keep, we keep doing this all day. Uh, oh, my Okay, gosh. cool, cool, cool. So, hey, that was fun. And let's see here. That was. Um, Great. Now, somebody, we have a Trivial Pursuit because people want to hear me talk about Dave Turchie. We have a Royal Ranks. Um, and I would okay. love to do these things, folks. But I am afraid we are going to have to wait until next week. Next week, we'll be back yeah. on our normally scheduled Tuesdays. Uh, because... I, I can't, I mean, because we're doing a Kickstarter show today and we have 24 games to talk about, our top 10 plus 14 additional ones that'll be on the channel. I, I, I think, I'm sorry, Nazgoth and Lord of Cardboard, thank you for the request. Folks, did you know you can make requests to get us to do stuff? Uh, click that cursive R down at the bottom of chat if you'd like to know more. You're accumulating points even as we speak. Uh, but anyway, next week we'll hit the Trivial Pursuits, we'll hit the Ruel Ranks and whatever else because we've got to get to work. Yes, oh, and you got a flight to catch. I got so a flight we don't to catch, wanna, literally. Yeah, we don't want you to miss your flight. Yep. Um, yep I'm yep. really looking forward to Dice Tower West. I cannot wait to actually meet you in person, Richard. This is. It's, I it's know so it's so weird we when you when you pointed right? that out that we have not yeah. met in person. I, I feel like I know you <laughs> so well, but um, right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Cool. 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 Okay. Alrighty, so we are putting that on the screen. If I if I if I'm doing this right, yes, putting that on the screen to remind people we are updating the banner down at the bottom. Oh wait, no, before we do, we totally forgot. I think it's been a couple of episodes since we've had a battle royale. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we gotta get these people fighting. Yep, yep, yep. What are we doing? Uh, let right. them fight. Fight everybody. Alrighty, here they go. Oh, and I just dropped my earbud out. Here comes okay, the plane. One's... Sound is working. There we go. All right. Oh, and I see. So I need. Good luck, everybody. I want to go to a bigger screen so I can uh, provide my color commentary. <laughs> All right. Where am I? Where am I amongst the group? I. Kabuki Kid is come. All right. Is surrounded. All right. There I am in my little, uh, in my scuba diving scoop with my bubble and my trident, and uh, me and Kate Vader are going toe to toe. Everybody's jumping on me. What the heck? Look at that. It's like, and boom. No, I'm not out yet. But I'm not okay. Oh, I fought my train through all that. That's incredible. Wow. But um, Kabuki Kid uh, throws down and uh, puts the kibosh on me. Rado has run out of the building. Okay, so what else is going on? <laughs> Priscilla, a new fighter, a brand new, wearing a mask. Well done, Priscilla. But nice. it didn't protect you um, from Ret Sam, who uh, knocks you out. <gasps> there are health pa- There's a health pack on the board. Go get um, it. Go get it. Uh, Gordolas nice. gets it! Gordolas is coming in with his cute little adorable blue bandana. Look, but he's going up against Chairs Manor, or who is who is uh, in a better situation. Another health pack! Gordolas! Can get it? Get gets it! it. it. Boom! Nice. Okay, this is Gordolas' fight to lose. Gordolas yeah. versus Little Buster. Little Buster turns go, it back. Go, Never go. do that! You're you're nope. oh, and the key didn't save you. Okay, it's time for a rematch between Cherish. How did Cherish hold on this long? Right? I, I don't like it, uh, Gordolas. There it is. Oh, 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 oh a backstab oh. to finish it off. Wow. And well Cherish Mander <laughs> uh, is the winner. And looks very angry about it. Got the angry eyes. <laughs> Okay. So much fun. All right. Cool, cool, Folks, cool. Good job, the Battle Royale. You uh, don't worry. You're all regenerated for some more uh, stream uh, awesomeness. Yep. You are all good now. Everyone's back to back to full health. Yes, yes. Everybody's uh, okay. everybody's fine. And I guess Jared is winning it, but with fisticuffs, just uh, not even knuckle dusters, yeah. goes to prove it's not the size of the sword. It's the size of the heart. I don't know why yes. I just said that. I was just getting weird. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. I love it. All right, so what are we doing? Um, I, 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 the, oh. the, the sponsor. Oh, oh, we need a secret word. What's our secret word? Secret word, yes. Um, were we just talking about time travel? Is there? We were, we're talking, talking a lot about time, time travel? travel. A lot about yeah. time travel. Let me see if we can... Uh... What's a single word for time travel? Or a time travel um, movie? Yeah. Uh, either Avengers, Back to the Future... Um, gosh, mm. flux capacitor, <laughs> flux capacitor. Yeah, that's nice. really that's really uh, pretty casual to work that, that into a regular conversation. DeLorean, yeah. Primer. Since Primer got robbed, oh my gosh, it's such an amazing movie. 
Uh, I think I can work in some kind of uh, time travel into one of my games. But yeah. Like, what word could I do? Well, it's just a matter of picking the one then. Yeah. Uh, what were those? So we had Back to the Future, Avengers Endgame. What was the third one again? The um, uh, 12 Monkeys. Um, hmm. Yeah. Monkeys. Groundhog. Monkeys. Clock. Groundhog. Hey, would you consider Groundhog Day a time travel movie? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, I mean, I think a few people suggested, you know, time loop movies. I I would say he's traveling back in time every time. Yeah, I would think that's totes Uh, legit. Cool. Cool. Um, let's see. We do. What about? Can we do? Let me see. Gosh, this is. I've done the last couple, so I'm taking a break. Yeah, I, 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 I I was gonna say I want to do this one. Um. But what's the word? One word. Time travel, flux capacitor. Um, leap. Loop. Leap. Warp. Um, slingshot around the sun. Uh, I like that. Temporal. Wormhole. Yeah. This is the audience well, let's do warp. I, I, I think I can do warp. All right. Warp or warped? Uh, warp, W-A-R-P. W-A-R-P, okay. By the way, uh, somebody pointed out last week that we keep making the mistake of, oh, let's make sure they know how to spell the secret word. They don't need to know how to spell the secret word. They need to know how to spell the name oh, of the game. And we keep right, saying, duh. oh, will they be able to spell it? And, um, <laughs> all right. So you're up. Think about that. At some point, okay. you are going to say the secret word, which is, last week it was widget, and now it is warp. So we're uh, warp. continuing the double. Uh, Forrest of Glass wants to know past tense or present tense. Actually, I screwed up last time. I put widget on, but I said widgets. But it seems like most people figured out. And, uh, yeah. and, uh, oh, and surprisingly, very few people commented on the fact that I said it twice uh, on purpose. And uh, But almost nobody noticed that. Or at least if they did notice, they didn't say anything. Really? Yeah. But it was, it was during the same game. I remember yeah. that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I basically just yeah. repeated the same sentence a second time. Um, you know, because, hey, there's before and then there was the after. So, I, I, oh, I can say it again. This will be nice and it'll help people spot it. And to be fair, we had a higher um, percentage of entries than normal, interestingly. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. All righty. Yeah. I see Bing is late about. to the party. What's going on? It's not Tuesday. Yes, it is. It's, it's totally Tuesday. Bing! you you got to get to work, <laughs> man. Come on! <laughs> We're filming early because uh, t- uh, this afternoon I am flying to Dice Tower West. Tomorrow, Ruel is driving. So we just had to film a day early because uh, we didn't want to skip a week. Mm-hmm. All right. So I don't need okay. you anymore. I need to get the browser online. All right. So that should be fine. And if I, let's see, if I go to the first entry... Yep, there we go. And I can just pause that, I think. So that'll be fine. All right, so I've got this up. All right, so our sponsor this week is the uh, uh, card battle game World Breakers. Let me confirm that's there. Yep, there it is. So this week's episode brought to you by World Breakers. And then we come back over here. Hey, Royal, how you doing? How are you doing? Oh, we've got so much to talk about today. Uh, for starters, what's on the table? And then I say, what's on the table? And then we do all that business. Let me move this out of the way so we can do that. And uh, then we say, one lucky person can win this. And how do they win? And you say how they do it. And then we say, okay, enough of that. Let's talk about games. First of all, um, we're going to cover some games. So we're keeping them off the list uh, in the case of bias and blah, blah, blah. And then we do oh, the rest. Okay. okay. Sound right? Do you want? Yeah, that sounds great. Do you want to do a shout out to the fundraiser mm. that Matthew Jew put together? Thank you. I totally forgot. We had talked about that. Yeah. That um, this weekend, uh, was it your entire 24-hour marathon that was uh, doing fundraising yeah. for Ukraine? Yeah, so the yeah. Tabletop Live Network, uh, all, um, we have 12 channels that stream for 24 hours. And yes, at the very last moment, Matthew Jude from uh, uh, Things Get Dicey, he's, uh, he always partners with uh, uh, Paula Deming. Uh, he, uh, last minute, he just said, hey, let's raise some money for the people of Ukraine. And he put together a fundraiser. And the goal is 2,000 uh, pounds. And I think we've raised 1,100 pounds. Yeah, you're which halfway is about, there, or a bit over halfway there. Yeah, so let's definitely, like 15, let's carry that US on. Dollars. Um, yeah, let's do that. Thank right, you okay, so let much. me get that. Uh, okay, I need to get that launched in the browser, so I will have that ready to be put on screen. Uh, okay. Let me see. I know you sent it to me in Discord. Do I have it? Yes, I do. There we go. Cool. I will accept your cookies. All righty. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Right, and um, excellent. So we will, we will do that. So first of all, hey, how you doing? And boy, this is kind of a heavy topic, though. Uh, how do we just... 
I mean, we could, you know, we'll, we'll say what we have to say, but we don't have to, we don't have to say yeah, yeah, yeah. too long. You know? um, so we do, it was, okay, hey everybody, how you doing? How you doing, Well, You know who's not doing great? The people of Ukraine. I mean, I, I don't want to be cheesy or flippant about it. Um, yeah. You know what? Yeah. You, you've got a manner. You've got a way about you. I'll let you broach it. <laughs> okay, yeah. After you, yeah, when you bring the show in, I'll say I'm doing okay, but um, one thing before we get started. Perfect. Yeah, look, talk about see, that's already you know. better than my silly flippant off the... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Plus, actually, honestly, if you do most of the talking, it's probably for the best because I might cry. And uh, yeah, I, I'm not gonna lie. It's 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 been choking me up lately too. Oh it's, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. This is real stuff. This is like the uh, heavy stuff. But we we will keep it. Uh, we we will we'll we will all do what we can to help. Yep. And exactly. so yeah, cool, cool, cool. All right. So I've got that queued up, ready to go. Let me just make sure. Oh, first of all, let me make sure my overhead camera hasn't crashed. Do 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 do. Yep, that's fine. <laughs> All right, so that's there. So, and we'll say there's a link for it down in the show notes if people would like to help. Um, and as I recall, I remember Matthew saying this was a uh, fundraiser recommended by Ignacy Trebchek of uh, Portal Games. Okay. So, yeah. and you know, Ign Ignacy, of course, he's, he, you know, he, he, he's, he's, I, he, he's, he's, he's tied in to what's going on there. He, so he's right yeah. there. Yep. Exactly. Yep. 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 He's on. Yeah. I mean, it's heck, I mean, you know, the, 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 uh, Mysterium was published by iGames. They yeah. are a Ukrainian right. board game publisher and, and he was mm -hmm. a partner with them to bring Mysterium over to a wider audience with time he traded most of So yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm happy to have him as an expert recommender. Okay. So let's see if we can uh, raise some pounds and, and help some people. Yep. Okay. Cool. 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 I think everything's queued up. You're ready to go. The audience is ready to go. I don't think we have any outstanding big problems. Have we missed anything? Oh, Priscilla, thank you for handing out a community sub. That is very kind of you. Oh. Getting us ever closer to the elusive RBR where all of us will get to play some Three Sisters, which I'm very excited yes. about. Very, very Can excited about. Okay. And, uh, okay, I think we're all caught up. <clears throat> Let me one last okay. sippy sip. Same thing. Uh, all righty. We're all bakers. And box cover. <clears throat> and you folks can talk amongst yourselves and uh, we'll catch you on the other side and we will try to make some time after we're done for some Q&A so if you have questions come on back to us if you have questions for us go ahead and ask them in the chat whenever you want but start your question with a question mark because that means it gets flagged in a special program so we will not miss your questions so we can do some question Q&A at the end um, so that'll be cool that'll be cool right? All right. All right. Okay. Phew. I thought you froze there for a second. Um, oh. Okay. <laughs> mm, let's see here. Box cover. <clears throat> mm, mm. Hey, everybody. This week's episode of the R&R &R Show is brought to you by World Breakers. And hello, Ruel. How are you doing? I am doing great, my friend. How are you, Richard? I am okay. I'm a little stressed out because we got to get this thing filmed so I can catch a flight to Dice Tower West. That's right. So, folks, uh, watching on YouTube, we are recording this on Monday uh, instead of Tuesday this mm -hmm. week in order to get it all uh, edited down and ready to go on YouTube because Richard's going to be on an airplane flying uh, in a, a couple of hours here, and I'll be <laughs> driving tomorrow, which is Tuesday, to Dice Hard West. So, if you're at Dice Hard West, please come by, stop by, and say hello, and we'd love to uh, chat with you and maybe play a game. Yeah, um, and um, Ruel yeah. will be handing out buttons. Buttons are plenty. Oh, that's right, yeah. I will have plenty of Tabletop Tonight buttons. That's uh, my Twitch channel. Uh, my wife and I, Michelle, actually, we handcrafted them. We bought a button-making machine. We've got plenty to give out. So please uh, stop by, and we'll, we'll happily give you one if you ask nicely. And it's not like uh, I'm but... trying to one-up Ruel or anything, but if you swing by my <laughs> wife's booth at uh, Gamer Glass, and if you're interested in buying any of her wares, uh, we will be offering, as a gift with purchase, a Rotto Runs Everdell set of cards, which are just absolutely awesome. So you'll be able to yes. pick those up at the convention uh, swing by Jen's booth see if you like anything because we're throwing in uh, we're, we're taking a few hundred of these along as a gift with purchase alrighty All right. I was going to say uh, could we make, perhaps do a trade Z's I will trade some buttons for some of those cards I'll set one aside <laughs> for you <laughs> thank you sir thank you hey uh, before we get going I do want to mention one thing um, we do not do this show in a vacuum folks we are well aware of what's going on in the world today and as you know, there's some um, some big events happening yes. uh, in the Ukraine. And without getting too deep into it, what we want to do, we just want to say that we are trying to raise some money for the people yeah. who are unfortunately out there in the Ukraine right now. Um, 
dealing with some very, very, very bad stuff. And thanks to our friend Matthew Jude of Things Get Dicey, um, uh, along with Paula Deming. Uh, Matthew set this up here uh, through the charity Care. And our goal is to raise 2,000 pounds. And as you can see there, uh, Richard just pulled it up. We're halfway there, folks. Um, how did we get there uh, so quickly? This past weekend, the Tabletop Live Network, it's a uh, collaboration between a bunch of us Twitch streamers. Um, we do live board game streams throughout an entire 24 hour period. Uh, so Matthew at the very last moment said, hey, I, I think this is a good thing we should do. And all of us just, we hopped on board right away. And uh, Richard, um, you know, kindly said, you know what, this is awesome. Yeah. Let's continue and let's get you to that goal. So thank you for doing this, uh, Richard. We really appreciate it. Um, the Ukrainian people, folks, you know what they're going through right now, and every little bit counts. Yeah, so we're if all you have in the means, together. and you know, I mean, we are all yes. Yeah, we are a small industry, a small little podunk industry, uh, board games. But oh my gosh, there is such a huge board game uh, presence in the Ukraine. Um, you know, Mysterium was des was designed and developed and published by a Ukrainian de developer. All most of the art in Gloomhaven was from a Ukrainian artist. Um, you know, I mean, so uh, you know, what's happening reaches out and touches everybody. And if you folks have it within you, if, if you have the wherewithal and the means, there's going to be a link for uh, this site down in the show notes. Let's try to get this over our limits so that we can reach out and help some of those folks who really are in dire straits at the moment. Yep. Yeah. Thank you again for sharing that. That's okay. Great. Okay. And now, to change subjects to a slightly uh, more upbeat topic, do you have any questions for yeah. me, Ruel? Uh, I do have a question for you. What the heck is that on your table? I'm glad you asked. Uh, <laughs> this is World Breakers, which, by the way, is sponsoring the show this week. This is a game that's actually going to be going live on Kickstarter this week, which is why it's certainly appropriate uh, that we talk about it right now, um, because we're about to talk about a whole bunch of Kickstarter games. And now this is a head-to-head -head dueling game. Uh, you know, and it has some passing familiarity with uh, magic kind of thing, but to my way of thinking, for everything I've learned about this game, this is the game that fixes magic. I know a lot of games have talked about that over the years, but I'm really intrigued by this. Uh, you know, you start the game, everybody has a hand of what? One, two, three, four, five. And it's not called mana, but it might as well be. This is the uh, resources you use. But this is not a game of, oh, I have to try and use my cards to get mana. I've got the stuff. So what do I want to do? Well, hey, if it's a dueling game, how about how about I get my uh, Stripped Necklace Captain into play? That's going to cost me four of my starting. I'm almost broke. But you're in trouble, Ruel, uh, coming your way. But that's it. My turn is over. It's your turn now. This is the center of this game. The uh, idea that the structure is not about, oh, I'm going to do some really big complex turn, and maybe you'll interrupt me and mess with me, and then you'll do some really big complex turn. This is a game that feels, while it is a dueling card game, much more like a board game to me. Uh, you've got your five cards. One, two, three, four, five. You have an immediate... Everything I do, you immediately respond through. Not through like game-breaking interrupts, but just because of the overall structure of the game. You see, oh, I'm going to come over and start attacking you. Not to kill you, but just every time I successfully attack you, I earn power. And we're racing to get to 10 power. So, uh, you got to decide. Are you going to let me just get a power for free? Because uh, I don't hurt you. You're just going to let me um, you know, run rampant? Or are you going to get somebody else yourself? Okay, well, hey, you've got an event. A gratuitous gift. Uh, let's see. Play a follower card. Cost three less. This is three. I'm going to play this event for free. Or you are. And then that means you can get your... You can get your emissary out. Normally it would cost four, but it only costs one. So you're richer than me. And now all of a sudden, you've got a defender. I'm a 3-5. You're a 2-5. And now it comes back to me. Now I don't have just a free and easy way to get power. If I attack, you can block. Now I'll do more damage to you. And another cool thing about this game is damage accumulates over time. Uh, so it's not like just, oh, the fight's over and then everything starts over. Um, you know, and So people get wounded. You can uh, deal with all that kind of stuff. So maybe I won't because there are other things I can do. You make power, i.e. points, either by successfully attacking without getting blocked or by visiting locations. And I've got... A uh, volatile furnace. Oh, I would love to get this in play. But I'm broke. This is going to cost me five. And it also costs one um, allegiance with a guild. And I start with one allegiance. Another thing I can do is, well, I can do all kinds of stuff. On an action, I'm just going to do one of these things. Right now, because I don't want to attack you, because it's not going to do any good, um, I will do more damage to you. But you do bloodshed to me. So I just think I'm going to let sleeping dogs lie. I'm just going to start rebuilding. And I'll, hopefully we'll just stay at detente so I can get this out. So I can start earning power with this. But the thing is, if I eventually get this out into play, 
I can activate it three times. That is another thing I can do on my list. And the first action doesn't do much. The second one does more. The third one does a really big thing. But as soon as I've got that out, if you take out my defender, when you attack, not only do you start earning power, but you start hitting this and make me lose my really good stuff. But hey, maybe that's okay. Maybe I want you to hit me because I don't want to waste a turn getting this really dinky first step. I want you to hit me so I can get to the really good strong second step. And then that's what I'll do on my turn. But it's always, I do something, you do something. I do something, you do something. And when we get to the end of the line, we have a rally phase where we check to see if somebody's won. If somebody got 10 points early on, I've still got all these other steps to get 10 points myself and try to beat you or claw it back. But then the interesting thing is when a round is over, it flips. If you were the last player, you're the first player. And that's the most powerful ah. moment when you get to do two actions in a row in a game where there's always a counter move to your move. Getting to do over every once in a while, those um, double back-to-back -back actions is incredibly powerful. So this game is really sleek easy playing. This is not a CCG. This is not a game that's going to be all about just having to chase the what is it you chase? The dragon, um, you know, trying to get more and more stuff. It comes with a fully fleshed out four full decks, all based on real historical characters. And the development of this game, I'm really impressed by too. Uh, this is actually set in alternative 13th century Far East. Uh, so you have Mongolian characters. You have Marco Polo as a character. One of the things oh. I thought was coolest about it, if you are playing with Mongolian characters, the artist for these is an actual real world Mongolian artist. So the developer really worked hard on inclusivity, nice. on, um, you know, a wide variety of people, uh, you know, showing up with not just all the standard beefy guys in loincloths. Very, very impressive title. Fun, fast-playing game. And the thing that probably more than anything else impresses me about this, I don't know if you're familiar or well with the um, channel Gideon Gaming. Gideon's Gaming. It's a YouTube channel. I. I'm not. He's he's small. He's starting to grow now. I've been subscribed to him for a while because he has, for my money, the best deep strategic breakdowns of Marvel Champions. And um, oh. so and when I saw, and that's normally what he covers. His whole channel is about, you know, really diving deep into all the strategies and imbalances and stuff like that. I love watching his channel. I saw him do his first ever preview because he loved this so much. And he does such a deep dive into the gameplay here. I cannot recommend it enough. If I've at all piqued your interest, follow the link down there to go check out uh, Gideon's gaming channel. Watch his seven minute summary of how deep and tactically and strategically rich game is. And I think you'll be convinced, like me, it's a game to pay attention to. And uh, that. That's our sponsor for the show. And awesome. guess what? You might win a copy of this game. Well, how can they win? Wow, that sounds awesome. I, I'm excited about this game. The fact that it's got that really quick back and forth yeah. uh, between uh, players, I, that looks fantastic. Folks, you can win a copy of this game by just watching our show. That's all you got to do. Hang out, watch the show. Nothing, nothing more than that. Mm -hmm. But we're going to say a secret word. And one of us is going to say the secret word. And what you need to do is type in the name of the game that we're talking about when the secret word is spoken. Yes. And send the name of the game to contest at rotto.com. And you will be entered to win uh, your very own copy of uh, World Beaters. Um, the secret word for this week is warp. Yep. As in warp drive. W-A-R-P. Warp. Um, warp, warp, warp. As yeah, in, one of let's us do say the time warp again. Again. And hopefully that's in everybody's <laughs> head now. Because it's yeah. been in mine ever since warp was suggested <laughs> as a secret word. That's right. That's just where so, I go. Uh, yeah, so warp, uh, folks, one of us is going to say it during the show. Uh, one of the games that we're going to be talking about on our top ten list, you will type in the name of that game and send it over to contest at rado.com and you'll be entered to win a very your very own copy okay, yes indeed so that's how we do it yep um you, you got the secret word you just have to pay attention to that folks so you know what to do yeah write that email and, and you uh, have until march 8th uh so if you're watching this episode on march 9th i'm sorry it's too late but you still might want to go check out word breakers anyway on kickstarter because um man i mean you know obviously this is not necessarily my kind of game but i just love the board gaminess of this it's very very intriguing yeah. i love that this is more about me just scoring points as opposed to hurting you and mm -hmm. i think this is i mean even for me this is be a great gift the next time my niece and nephew come and visit and they bust out all their magic that they always want to play with uncle richard no we're playing my prototype of world breakers <laughs> if i don't have a real full version of the game at that point <laughs> nice. <laughs> cool. All right. Okay. Let's see here. So, yes, go uh, we got that out of the way. Uh, we are getting ready for the top 10 list for uh, this episode. 
Yes, Which we are. Is, um, it yeah. is. We are going to be t- we're going to be running down our most anticipated upcoming crowdfunding games. Uh, games that are going to be, for the most part, we might have missed a few, uh, but for most, they're going to be coming out in March, maybe April. It's never a hundred percent certain. You know, sometimes uh, the best laid plans might change a little bit, but uh, that's what we're going to be doing. However, before we get to our top ten which uh, I spent hours on last night. Hours that I did not have because I had to be prepared to go travel to Dice Tower West. But still, went through about six or 700 games that are on the coming soon list on Kickstarter and GameFound. I've got five. Ruel's got five. We've combined that into our top ten. But before we get to that, here's the deal, folks. There are about... 14 games that are going to be coming in crowdfunding form over the next few weeks that are going to be on the channel. We didn't want to put those on the list because we're doing paid previews for those. So there'd be you know, issues of bias and whatnot. So we're going to briefly run down all the upcoming... I mean, these are all games we're really excited about because otherwise we wouldn't have decided to cover them in the first place. I'm going to list those 14. I'm going to blitz through them really quick so you can know they're coming. Every single game we're talking about today will have a link down in the show notes. So if we strike your interest at all, find that link, follow it, and you'll be able to click a button that says, hey, let me know when this Kickstarter goes live. So I'm going to go through those, and then we'll actually get to the real 10 that we started to count down. Does that make sense? Am I right. am I missing something or well? No, I think we, that, that explained it perfectly. We are good to go. Okay, then let's see. First of all, we are talking about top 14 uh, crowd funders coming to RRT. Save. That should be our new banner. Yep, that's where we are. Let me bring nice. up the browser, and I believe if I recall correctly, if I set this up right a couple of hours ago, these are in alphabetical order, starting with Assault on Doom Rock, the Ultimate Edition. Now, if you don't know anything about Doom Rock, you can go watch my run-through. I've actually done a few run-throughs of this over the years because I absolutely adore it. A really deep, crunchy, cooperative adventure game that mixes so many really interesting, disparate... I mean, it's got dice worker placement. It's got, you know, tactical skirmish stuff. It's got exploration and adventure. It's got resource management. But it does it all in an incredibly tight, efficient, very Euro-y package and a hilarious package, too. This game is often laugh-out-loud funny. And so it's getting the ultimate edition you know, collecting all the stuff that's been out already, which I've covered over the years, and um, a really nice update and upgrade to everything. Uh, Shay covered, did the run through for this, and I'm actually kind of jealous. When I saw that player, I'm like, oh, I wish I, I want to play Doom Rock on that. But anyway, uh, that's going to be one of the games you'll be seeing on our channel in March. And then next nice. up, we have got uh, Autobahn. Which is a run-through I'm going to be doing. I've already filmed it, but it won't be going live until the uh, Kickstarter launches. I think in the middle of the month. This is a great uh, Euro economic Euro simulation uh, that tracks that tracks the growth and development of the Autobahn from 1946 to 2020. Uh, and so it is deep and it's really rich and it does a lot of things very nicely. It's kind of like a card worker placement game and every move you make is always creating opportunities for your opponents and everything they do is creating opportunities for you. So you're always having to make really tough decisions. But actually the most impressive thing about this game to me, Ruel, is as a die hard pick up and deliver hater, Jen, either Jen or I like that. This oh. is a pickup and deliver oh. game. We actually really dig. Uh, they, wow. you know, Fabio Lapiano and um, uh, Nestori Mangone, the two desi- two really hot Italian designers, have found a way to make Jan and me fall in love. So you'll be seeing that soon. A lot of picking up and delivering and building of the Autobahn. Ooh, then nice. we've got Darkest Doom, which we haven't filmed yet. I I think uh, Shay's still waiting on getting the prototype. Uh, but wow, it looks gorgeous. Uh, this is a, a beautiful looking game. Really nice miniatures. Uh, coming soon to Kickstarter. Uh, because Shay is covering this one and he hasn't filmed it yet. I can't really say much about it. But honestly, I trust... Shay's uh, opinion. Shay took a look at this. Our process is basically whenever a publisher contacts us and says, hey, would you be interested in doing a preview for our game? We take a look at it, read the rules, and decide, well, does that sound like fun or not? We say no nine times out of ten, but Shay said yes to this. So you will be seeing uh, Darkest Doom, which looks gorgeous, coming uh, in a few weeks. Then we have got Encyclopedia. Oh, this is a fantastic game. Uh, basically a sequel to Museum and Dominations from the same uh, publisher designer group. Uh, I actually filmed this several months ago, but wow, we really, really enjoyed it quite a bit. It's a very deep and interesting worker placement hero with some really fresh takes on worker placement that is all about creating the world's first encyclopedia. Uh, it actually really goes into the history and the real people who are doing this, and it's all about 
about trying to decide how much of your dice worker placement resources are spent on studying in the field, you know, uh, doing academic research, uh, and actually publishing these works. And you've got to really balance all of this stuff, and it's really sharp. My run through should be coming in March. Okay. That looks fantastic. Then yeah. we've got, oh my, there's so many of them. Uh, this one is <laughs> Hamlet. Look at this thing. This is yes. the most goofy looking cattywampus tile layer you've ever saw, but I love it. This is a communal thing where we're all working together to try to build the best Hamlet. And all the tiles in this game are crazy triangles and diamonds and hexes and all that. And at first I thought, why did they do this? But after Jan and I played it a little bit, I started to understand. Because in this game, you don't make perfectly regimented grids like Carcassonne or a perfect hexes like... Um, Oh, uh, suburbia. You make things that feel more real and natural. It feels like as a, as your, um, your hamlet grows and it does all these weird circuitous routes, it's like, oh, there must be a river there that it's running along. This feels real and it feels charming and atmospheric. So the feel is great. The gameplay is really, really sharp. Um, but the coolest thing about it is, while there's a, an equal amount of focus on, you know, activating things and doing quasi-worker placement and, you know, deciding, you know, what resources you're going to convert and other resources you can keep on expanding the town, to get those resources from one side of the town to the other requires donkeys. This game is all about donkeys. It's going to have cool, <laughs> cute little donkey meeples. My prototype didn't, unfortunately. And okay. as the game goes on, and the city gets bigger, and more circuitous, and more winding because of the crazy tiles, you have to set up supply chains that you can activate from one side of the room to the other. So this is a logistical exercise, as much as it is a worker placement game and a tile land game. And, yeah, Jen and I were both really blown away by it. It's from the designer of um, uh, The Pursuit of Happiness, and then we held hands. So I've loved those games, and and Hamlet, well, you'll see why I like it when my run-through goes up in a couple of weeks. Okay. Super Moving. excited about that one. That oh, yeah. Great. You should be. It's great. Uh, but you know what? Awesome. So is Mercurial. Um, and yeah. this is an interesting one. This is a... Uh, what would you call it? It is a game about trying to make potions to uh, fight monsters and save people in distress. Which, I'll be honest, is generally not the kind of subject matter I go for. I just don't find it intriguing. But this game, this card uh, drafting game, where you're drafting different types of cards, some cards are assistants who will help you modify dice. Because the dice are the fuel that gives you the reagents you need. Oh, and look, there's a... There's a... <laughs> there's Paolo making fun of me in the Klingon subtitles. What is he doing?! <laughs> Folks, always watch my videos of the Klingon subtitles. Paulo is hilarious. It's like a whole show of its own. Uh, but anyway, so you're, you're, you're drafting helpers to be able to control the dice. You're using dice to be able to get spell components. And then you're casting all these spells together to actually trigger the spells, which are the big point gearing thing. And the thing is, this game starts with trying to manipulate dice, kind of Yahtzee style, but then it goes so deep. Combos upon combos upon combos. These types of things, combos, to let you manipulate this, you can combo these other kinds of things, and it was just a blast to play. Even though it's not my type of subject matter, both Jen and I were super impressed, and you'll see that run through from Mercurial coming soon. Okay. All right. Yeah, sorry, this is so much. And we, we're, we're almost through it. We're up to the O's. Oak. Um, actually, Ruel, I only just got this in the mail. I'm bringing it with me to Dice Tower West. Maybe we oh, can play it. Can we play? Can, can yes. we? Can we? Well, it'll be in my suitcase. I, I would love... Yeah, I would love to play this because this was actually on my list Oops. of games I wanted to cover. Yeah, so I would love to play this with you. Yes. Okay. Well, then it's a date. It is a date. We will be there. We it will play date, Oak, sir. which is a gorgeous looking game. I think there's just a few pictures of it here on GameFound, mm -hmm. not on Kickstarter, on GameFound, but it has great uh, production. And, uh, you know, it is about, uh, you know, druids trying to be uh, in tune with nature and, you know, restorative stuff. I mean, that's subject matter I really like. I really dig that kind of thing. And it looks really deep and crunchy. And I can't wait to give it a go. And I'll be playing it with you when we meet in person yeah. for the first I time believe. ever. So that'll be fun. Cannot wait. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, you will destroy me at Oak. I'm sure will be step two of that process. Uh, I don't know about that. We, we, we shall see. <laughs> we shall see. Okay. Uh, but anyway, Oak is coming soon. When I get back, after having played it with Ruel, I'll uh, film a run through and tell everybody how it went. Um, wish me luck, everybody. Okay. <laughs> then um, we have got... Okay, another one that we have already filmed. Oh, Pilgrim. Boy, this is a very, very oh. cool game. Uh, this is set in uh, medieval, or maybe it's Renaissance era England, but we are pilgrims for the church, and it is our job to try to basically 
help the world. A big focus of this game is collecting resources, not for our own glory, but to literally give alms to the poor. Um, or, you know, if, if we build big, fancy buildings that, hey, once I've built this building, I can use this power, you can pay me to use the power. Eventually, though, I'm going to donate the building to the poor because, um, you know, that's kind of our goal, is to help people. And the gameplay is all driven by an excellent Moncala. A really cool, fresh take on Moncala. Um, you know, all the uh, spaces on the outside of the board, you know, you, you pick up all your pieces, you move them around clockwise. Here, There's a few key twists, though. The biggest one is you don't have to activate the space you land on. You could activate anything around the board. So you could be doing little baby turns to set up big turns later. And then the other thing, this is a Moncala that has branching paths. You could go halfway and then like, cut across the Moncala to skip to the other side of the board because you really are desperately trying to get to a certain spot. So it's cool new Moncala stuff, really satisfying route building because we're trying to make a... Uh, uh, pilgrimage roads to pilgrimage sites. We're also trying to open up trade routes so that we can boost the economy so they can all come back to helping people. So, not surprisingly, this was all something that Jen and I found very, very engaging. Really cool. My run-through is nice. coming soon. Okay. And uh, then, oh, Ryozen, which um, I, I don't know much about this. Ryan Crichton of uh, Nights Around a Table is going to be doing a rules run-through for this, and I can't wait to see it. All I know is this game looks stunning. Uh, yes. And it Warm features, it's a euro -E style game that has a rotating central board, this cool three-dimensional palace that's huge, and as you spin it, it actually changes what you have access to. And by the way, folks... Uh, there's a link for this page I'm looking at, like a link for every single game we're going to be talking about today. And they are talking about secure your early bird. Um, you know, mm. sign up to be notified when it launches now if you're at all interested. That looks, if this is what the early bird is, that's a pretty cool looking early bird miniature you can get. <laughs> I don't know, but um, I'm looking forward to seeing Ryan. Ryan does the best rules run throughs in the business, as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, so that'll be coming on the 16th. Let's see here if all goes to plan. Then. We're almost done. We move on to, oh, um, oh, what is this? Uh, Blood Twisted Moon? No, no, no. It was Static, Blood Static Moon. Where is the title? Where? Why are you not saying the title, YouTube, of my video? Oh, there it is way down there. Yeah, Static Blood Moon. This is a cool, fast-playing little filler um, abstract game, which is all about mm -hmm. dice drafting. There's, all, there's dozens of D10s all over the board in different colors with different numbers. You roll them all, and then players just take turns drafting them, putting them on their own dodecagram, I believe it's called. And you're trying to create um, straights or of a kinds or matching colors in several different ways. You're trying to create them on the vertices of all these different triangles. You're also trying to create them in strings around the triangle. So every die you take has the potential to score in three different ways. But you are restricted. You can't take uh, you know, two of a given color on the same turn. There's one space you can only take if you unlock special bonuses. Wherever the Grand Sage is, you can't grab from that. So this is a game all about timing and it's, an, it's one of the crunchiest games we have played in quite a while that you can get done from start to finish in 10 minutes. Although there are modes you can oh, play wow. longer if you want. Really impressive. Uh, Two-player cool. only game coming soon. Static Blood Moon. Okay. And then uh, Tamashi. This is another one I'll be filming. This is a futuristic adventure game that, um, you know, it's basically Terminator crossed with um, Blade Runner because it's the future of Blade Runner but oh, AIs are taking everything and they're trying to kill everybody. So, we are trying to save everybody and because it's a cyberpunky future, half the game is traveling around, exploring, discovering things, interacting with people, saving people, fighting bosses and all that. But the other half of the game is driven by a little sliding puzzle programming mini game. And that programming mini game is driven by a bag builder a la Orleans. So, you had me at bag builder. You had me at programming minigame, and you had me at cool um, neon-infused uh, you know, adventure as well. So, there's a wow. lot of really cool stuff here. You'll see my run-through for it coming soon. And, um, I think we're almost done. Terraforming Mars, Ooh. the Ares Expedition uh, expansion, which is so weird. It's coming in March. It hasn't been announced at all. I did the world's first unboxing for it a couple weeks. I filmed it now. Right. If you actually subscribe to me on Patreon, you can watch this run through right now because my Patreon backers get to see my videos early before they go public and they get to see them without ads. And uh, yeah, it is cool, cool, cool. It addresses my issues I had with the original Ares Expedition. It introduces an amazing co-op mode if you want to play. Not just a little... Mm -hmm 
tossed in co-op mode that the original had, but a really deep, interesting, rich one. Um, you can also play solo. And, uh, oh, it increases the player count to five and six, which is perfect uh, because this is wow. such a fast-playing game. Really awesome. The Ares Expedition expansion. Uh, that'll be coming soon at Terraforming Mars. And I think... Uh, Oh, yes, we're not done yet. Um, let's see. <laughs> this one is called um, Something Ice and Snow. Through Ice and Snow. This was actually in our last top 10 most anticipated Kickstarters when I just read about it. The oh, publisher okay. saw yeah. us talking about it and said, hey, you want to cover it? And they actually sent me an early copy of the rulebook and they sent me this picture. This is the only picture of the game in the world. If you go anywhere else, all you just see is zoom-ins of cards and stuff like that. This gives you an idea. Wow. This is about finding the Northwest Passage. You can see we found some of it. We haven't found others. And it, it is a rich, deep, heavy game with a lot of interplay between players. I haven't gotten my prototype yet, but I'm really excited. Fingers crossed it's as good as I think it's going to be. But I, the rules definitely convince me it's one to watch for uh, through ice and nice. snow. And then I think this is it. Tidal Blades, Rise of the Unfolders. Yeah. Another yes. one Shay is doing. This one is going to be huge. And uh, Shay really dug it. It's nothing. It's set in the same universe as the original Tidal Blades, but it is, it's, it's a dungeon uh, crawling adventure in this universe. Mm -hmm. So a very, very different beat, really colorful, some fresh, cool new ideas. You'll have to check it out when it goes live in March. Phew. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like Ooh, I said, we had a bunch of stuff to go over, didn't we? Busy month. Yeah. Uh, yes, wow. yes, yes, that. yes. But now... Tidal Blades uh, 2 looks awesome. I, which I one? can't wait to play that one. Tidal Blades 2, the one we just talked about. Um, I, I enjoyed the first one, but I, I just... I think that world that they're creating is so unique and so cool that I cannot... You know, anything in that world, I, I'm very interested in playing. So, uh, so I actually have uh, Tidal Blades right above... Uh, right over my shoulder here. Ah. Uh, the, the artwork is, uh, is just gorgeous. But, yep. wow, what a great month. Uh, those are some great games that we've got Well, I mean, coming those are games that I am... That I know from personal experience are great or that I have very high hopes for. But now... Yeah. We're going to flip the script and talk about a bunch of games that you and I found that we don't know anything about, but they just look really cool. So you're getting yeah. 24 games today, folks. Um, are you ready to go? Ruel, do you have your list at the ready? I, I am ready. Yeah. Do you want to uh, take a water break? Uh, you just, you, I you, you, do. You talked about a ton Thank of games you. there. Why oh don't my you, gosh. you know, hydrate? You know, it's important to stay hydrated. I'm, I'm going to reveal our number 10 on the list. Please do. Right now is, uh, number 10, is Betwixt and Between Forces of Nature. Okay, you're going to have to tell so, me about this one. Yeah, this one, uh, you'll, I think you'll you'll like the uh, description of it. It is, um, you are, we, you uh, one to four players, and mm -hmm. this can be a solo game, mm -hmm. uh, take on the role of mystics. So you're finding your way through this strange land, exploring, um, trying to get the magical essence and what you're doing is it's combining card placement with uh, character movement. And you're trying to come up with combos to uh, score points. And it's uh, at its heart, it's a tile placement game, which I know you and I both love. I love and tile one, land games. Yes. And this one, is, is The Force of Nature, this is actually a standalone, I mean, an expansion, not okay. a standalone, an expansion to uh, uh, Betwixt and Between. Right. Um, so I, which is what I I'm showing any, on screen, um, by the way, folks, because there's no pictures yeah. of the expansion yet. So I'm just showing Betwixt and Between pictures on screen right yep. now. Yeah, so I don't. I haven't played the original, but I think this looks really interesting. And the ex, uh, the expansion, what it does is uh, they give you some new exploration cards and also give uh, each player uh, their own mystic abilities. So mm. we always talk about asymmetric abilities. Mm -hmm. They're putting that they're putting that in here in the expansion, which I think is a which be a fine point for us to start off. You know, you get um, extra artifacts and so forth and. According to the, according to the description here, you're going to have some epic turns, you know, uh, <laughs> pl placing tiles and collecting sets and uh, building your patterns and stuff. So this one looks really interesting. The art looks really cool, and uh, I'm excited to try it. That is our number ten, betwixt and between forces of nature. Okay, it sounds good. Um, and it's interesting you say. I mean, the stuff you say that it adds, those sound like the things like. Why doesn't it have these things? So um, yeah, like you said, it's probably a good time to jump on board. Good call. That's right. Cool. <coughs> okay. okay. Well, let's, we are going to move on to my on. number nine after I get another drink of water because I've got the frogs in the throats. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully that took care of it and everybody <laughs> enjoyed the little gargling uh, um, intermission. Okay. All right. <laughs> All righty. So let me talk about my number nine, which is Age of Comics, The Golden Years, uh, yes. which, oh, yeah, I'm um, 
Oh, I was gonna say I, I I know this game and I I'm I'm excited about. This oh, game. really? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it is definitely one I am intrigued by. Uh, in part because I'm a lifelong comic book fan. I, I have been ever since I was a little kid, and um, you know, these days maybe I I love more of the comic movies than the comic books, but I still love comic books too. So an entire game about the golden age, you know, the uh, the 20s, 30s, 40s, when you know superheroes were first coming about. But you, I mean, uh, com but comic books about cowboys and romance and detectives and everything else was incredibly. It was so amazing. Amazing the width and breadth of subjects that were available back then, as opposed to you know comics are like a little bit more condensed these days. And um, so an entire game about this, which as I understand it, focuses on trying to run the most successful you know upstart comic company, focusing on different genres, you know investing in different writer artist combos, trying to pay attention to when a given writer or a given genre is really hot and get stuff out there. If somebody else get you know starts something really popular, you can say. Well, okay, I'll try to make my own popular thing, or I'll make a knockoff of your thing. I'll make Super Dude after you make Superman, and see if I can leech away some of your sales. So all this stuff sounds really cool. And um, and then on top of it, there I don't think there's any pictures of it on Board Game Geek, but apparently there is a map of Manhattan, which is where you know all the comic book uh, companies were, you know, a lot of them were located there. And uh, so in addition to everything I just described, there's also kind of this area control thing where you're trying to stake out a claim on all the hottest sales points in the city as well. And I have to admit. Nice. That I'm a little bit less interested in because it sounds like, well, maybe that's area control. Maybe that's going to be a bit of two punch em, rock em, sock em. I'm not quite sure. But I'm still definitely willing to give it a go just because the subject matter is really intriguing. And it seems like, from the description that I've read, it could be something very, very cool. So that is um, number nine, Age of Comics, The Golden Years. Yeah, I, I, I've seen this. I saw this a uh, few, I think a few months ago, just a little, uh, um, you know, the website or whatever. And the, I love the subject matter of this, you know, that time when comics was, the comics were basically being invented, right? Comics yes. were being invented. Mm -hmm. as, a, as an to, art so form, to yeah. See this, yeah, uh, and to see like a game take this on, I, that's, that's the beauty of Kickstarter. You could literally find almost anything mm -hmm. on any subject matter gamified. And I think that's a great segue to our number eight okay. um, game. Uh, speaking of uh, different types of subjects for board games, our number eight is Hot Diggity Dog. <laughs> <laughs> just the name alone is uh, it just grabbed me it's just yes. like you i just laughed out loud i literally laughed out loud when i saw it and you know like what the heck is this game it is a game about selling hot dogs at the ballpark i mean how brilliant uh -huh. is that take me out to the ball yeah game. you've yeah. got nine innings uh at the brand new baseball stadium you and your fellow vendors you're trying to get those hot dogs out there uh you have different sections of the park you could sell in <laughs> you could fulfill up to three hot dog orders per turn you go back to the commissary to refill your supplies you know maybe you need some condiments some more dogs or whatever i just i just uh, the, the fact i okay so i love baseball yes. i love you know go dodgers i'm a dodger fan for life and just going to the ballpark has a very special meaning to me and my family uh we go there um at least once a year and even to the local minor league parks i just love being at the ballpark there's a certain uh, just the atmosphere is just it's very uh, just warm and uh, warm and fuzzy for me and to play a game like this where I can just imagine all the vendors over the years hey give me a hot dog or a <laughs> dog and a beer please or whatever I want to do that and this game is going to let me do that um, that's why I, um, hot dog diggity dog is, is our number eight <laughs> I mean just just for the name alone come on I know I, I, I saw it on the list and it, and it made me laugh out loud last night at midnight when I saw it it made me laugh out loud I mean I, I it, yeah there's just you're right you're, you were right to point out that this is the beauty of Kickstarter I mean there's no way a game yeah. like that gets made in the traditional um you know format right for board games yeah, yeah. but Kickstarter yeah, can it, make you know, dreams talk come a true about, uh, yeah, it, it totally is, and you know, for, um, you know, I'm geeking out over the theme, of course. But there's uh, there's push your luck, there's worker placement, there's like a rondelle. I mean, come on, it's got all the everything that we love about board games, and but in the funnest funniest theme ever. So hot diggity dog, I can't wait to check it out. Yep, and uh, yeah, and you, and you also can say, hey, can we play some hot diggity dog too? So there's something to be said for that. No, that's cool. Yes. It, it looks really charming. It looks like the art's very nice. I'm sure it's a very yes. passion project. And uh, yeah. and uh, yeah, I, I hope it finds an audience because it deserves to. Same that's here. just so charming. Okay, yep. number seven on the list is not particularly charming at all. It is uh -oh. the Paradox Initiative. And, and it's interesting. Uh -oh. This is actually a sequel to a game I covered 
many, many years ago, back in 2015, Ruel, I covered uh, Paradox when it was originally on Kickstarter. And both Jen and I were super impressed by it. Uh, this is a game that is uh, set in the far-flung future, and it turns out there's a time quake that's destroying planets left, right, and center. And we are scientists trying to do techno babbly stuff basically to save the universe. But we do it with a really cool bejeweled like sliding puzzle uh, game that's on the side where we're swapping discs around to try to make patterns to get that the same way in video games it's so satisfying oh I can get that line of five and then boom they all explode and everything else slides into place and then when they slide into place that's how you get those chips out of the big quantum supercomputer and you can use them in kind of a worker placement kind of way to do all the different actions which is a lot of card set collection to be able to save these planets from the time quake and uh, yeah it was really good it's from a really quirky offbeat designer, uh, Brian Sewer, who had a very big hit on his hands last year with Merchants of the Dark Road. This is an earlier game from him, oh. and um, it is also very quirky and offbeat, but very smartly considered and well-designed. And now the new version of it, if I recall correctly, is coming from Elf Creek Games, and Elf Creek Games is known for really beautiful, lavish production. Yeah. So, I mean, what, I'm, what you're looking at here is a prototype from seven years ago. The final game from seven years ago looked a lot better, but I'm sure the new version, which there aren't really any pictures of yet, will be even better. So I put this one on our list because I already know the original game was great, and as I understand it, well, Brian is now seven years better as a designer. And so I want to see what he does. How does he improve it? How does he streamline it? How does he make it deeper at the same time that he's making it more streamlined? These are the kind of things I expect and I want to see in our number seven, the Paradox Initiative. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited because of those two words, Elf Creek. They put phenomenal games out there, and I think they're going to do this one right. And just looking at that video, I love seeing the the old school uh, the handheld cam. You oh, know, man. The, yep, yep, yep. Uh, uh, that's a throwback right there. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's wow. a young man's game doing handheld cam stuff. I'm too old for that bleep now. <laughs> okay, uh, let's move on to our number six yes, what do we got on our six? list here. Uh, upcoming games on Kickstarter and or um, GameFound. Trailblazer, the John Muir Trail. Oh, so okay. I this wasn't on my radar, but after doing you know my research last night, I looked at the uh, the title. I was like, okay, this seems interesting. But two thing two things stuck out to me right right off the bat. The artist, look at the artist, Andrew Bosley. Oh, oh um, yes, right. If I recall Iredale. correctly, Andrew Bosley made my top ten uh, favorite game artists when I did that list oh, a few yeah. years ago. He's yeah, he's he's mine. Uh, I just played. Uh, um, tapestry the other day for the first time in a year and a half and it reminded me how much I love uh, Andrew Bosley's art so this is the way I'm, I'm going to explain this is remember the game Parks that came sure. out like, like a year or two yeah, ago yeah 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 it's Parks but a deeper more rich um, game experience mm. you've got instead you're still going along the little trail here in this case the John Muir Trail um, exploring and uh, discovering things. Um, you're going to go through the meadows and mountains and everything, but it's going to have a little more um, set collection. It's got some worker placement. You're going to be taking actions. Gar and a little more Euro-y, uh, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, again, the theme it got me right off the bat. I was like, this, I mean, just look at it. It looks gorgeous. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Art. Yeah, I'm all, it really did remind me of Parks, but just a deeper Parks. I'm not, now, I love Parks, especially with the, uh, expansion, but I feel like this is going to take it to the next that next level. Especially, um, I, I can't get over the art. I love Andrew Bosley so much. He's easily a top five artist for me, mm -hmm. and that's why Trailblazer, the John Muir Trail, is our number six. Good choice. I am embarrassed that that did not that I did not see that that somehow I just completely overlooked it. What is wrong? You know, I guess uh, I was too tired. But I'm really glad you yeah, pointed you know, out. It's I I think that for me it was the name. I just a Trailblazer, the John Muir Trail. I honestly thought it was like a, a book being kickstarted, like a, like a coffee table <laughs> book, you know. And I'm like, oh, this is about the John Muir Trail, or whatever. But then I, you know, I looked at it. I was like, wait, wait, wait. That looks. And I, I, you know, I dove a little deeper. It's like, oh, Andrew Bosley, a game. You, you had me right there. So mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm really excited about this one. This looks <laughs> fantastic. Well, that it, you you got me excited, and I I, I wasn't before. I. Uh, but yeah, you had me at Andrew Bosley, but then yes. you really had me at Parks for Gamer Geeks. Yes. Parks is a lovely yes. little game, but yeah, it's a total gateway, really nice to play with families and kids and stuff like yep. that. But yeah, a, a big, heavy, deep, rich version of that with one of the best artists working in the industry. Yes, please. That is an excellent yep. number six. But it's not as good, Ruel, as our number five, which also fe uh, features an amazing art pedigree. Number five on the list is raw 
just good old fashioned R A yes. Reiner Kenichi yes. raw. Um, and, you know, it's interesting. Oh, don't worry, folks. If you've been wait, if you've been missing it, next week we're gonna get back to our regular top 100 games of all time countdown. But in a previous episode of our top 100 games of countdown, I listed Raw as one of the best games of all time, and I will stand yep. by that. I will fight anybody who disagrees. Um, and I will and, join you in that fight. So, uh, yes, <laughs> you'll you'll fight beside me on that. Yes, yes, um, yes. I, you have my sword. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> and my weird. Bidding scarab or whatever it might be, trying to throw some raw humor in there. <laughs> um, so raw is uh, uh, many would argue, and I might as well. Reiner Kenichi's greatest design ever. I mean, th- there's a lot of really good candidates, but raw is a fin- is also one of the greatest auction board games of all time. And um, now it's going to become one of the prettiest games of all time because it's getting a lavish deluxe reprint redo from 25th Century Games and the art of Ian O'Toole. And you want to talk about hot art. Uh, Ian makes hot art. This looks gorgeous. You know, one of the premier greatest designs of modern board gaming. Now, with uh, art from one of the greatest artists working today, this is going to be a very big deal. Um, You know, because, uh, don't get wrong, Raw has always been great. Every version of Raw has been great, but might be kind of hard to convince people to play if you have your old Dutch version of Raw from 1997. You're like, hey, let's play this. I don't know. Can we play something else? Um, people will be <laughs> lining up around the block to play Raw now because it looks gorgeous. It looks as good as it's always played, which is why it makes a list at number five, Raw. Yeah, it's it's a real shame it's been out of print for so long. But 20th, 25th Century Games, they do games right. And uh, they're going to, you know, they've done Kohaku, which is a, a, just a mind-blowing... Um, uh, uh, package, and I think they're going to do Raw Arrive as well. Oh, I believe with yes. the Uno tool. I mean, I, I don't think you can go wrong. Yeah, I'm super pumped about this. this game. Is actually one of my most anticipated games of this year, even though it's been around for 20 years. I mm. can't wait for this version, and uh, that's why it's our number five. But uh, let's yep, yep. move on to our number four, let's which do it. also looks very pretty and very cool. Our number four is Far Cry Beyond. Oh, okay. This, All right. Yeah. So I actually, uh, do you know anything about that? I have no idea what uh, the, the the video game's about, Far Cry. Do you play this video I game? I have Ubisoft? played the first Far Cry, back when I was still yeah. in the video game industry. Yeah. Uh, before I yeah. pretty much, before I'd actually even discovered modern board games. And board games actually cured me of my lifelong video game addiction. But Far Cry, <laughs> at least the first one, and I believe the entire series, has always been one of these big open worlds that you're free to explore and do whatever you want. It's like Grand yeah. Theft Auto, but out um, you know, it, 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 far away from cities. Uh, basically, right. I think would be, uh, you know, kind of a, an elevator pitch for it. But, yeah. um, and they're yeah. like, I think they're like in their seventh uh, version of Something it now, like that, video yeah. game wise. But this will be the first video game. So we're going to warp back in time to the 1980s. Uh, and this game is set in the 80s. And I, you know, that right there, I was like, the 80s? I mean, come on. You're all oh all my gosh, it. are you saying and, this is uh, really Commando the board game? That's, I, I hope it is, because if it is, I'm all in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, get to the, get, get get to to the, the chopper. chopper. Um, yeah. So uh, it's a first person shooter game. And what it reminded me a little bit of is I don't know if you remember playing uh, the CGE game Adrenaline. I have uh, never Adrenaline. played Adrenaline, but I've only ever heard yeah. great things about it. It's a fantastic game, and this I feel like takes a little bit of that, where it's a they take the first person shooter element and put it on a board game, and uh, they do it uh, more of like. Uh, this was really interesting. So there's not really much info on the game, but from what I saw, there's a video I checked out uh, that talks about how this has almost got some legacy elements to it. Okay. Where you're ramping up, leveling up your characters and uh, your dice that you're going to use to resolve stuff. You can level those up and get better dice, uh, improve your characters, get more weapons. And, you know, as you go on, just like any first person shooter, you're going to get uh, better stuff as you go on. And you can see the little animals there and stuff that you're going to fight yep. against. And, well, uh, my hope the, is that that dog yeah. is on our side. Um, yeah, because that's, that's a way looking. That looks a like cool a friendly dog, uh, right? pooch to me, quite there. <laughs> uh, that little miniature. Yeah. Oh, plus, it's got a character yeah. ring around it. Yeah. So. It, yeah. So it's uh, again, uh, it's, it's set in the '80s. So right there, I'm all uh, I'm all over it. And uh, if it if if it, uh, just again based on my preliminary uh, overview of this, if it's anything close to Adrenaline, I think it's gonna be a winner because Adrenaline is such an underrated game like i think people got away from it just because all oh, first person shooter whatever it's actually a little more euro-y than yeah. you think 
Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, adrenaline's wonderful, but uh, I'm hoping that Far Cry lives up to the hype as well. So yeah, that's why it's on the list. You're ho- you that, want yeah. you want Arnold Schwarzenegger's Commando crossed with CGE's adrenaline, and that's yes. what you're looking for. And I would be all in on that. Yes, get to the chopper. So that's chopper. why it's our number. <laughs> that's why it's our number four. Uh, Far Cry Beyond. I don't think I can argue with uh, that nostalgia kick at all. I was totally unaware <laughs> right? of that. I mean, I knew it was tied in, but I assumed it was probably just gonna be modern day hotspots because I think that's mostly what Far yeah. Cry is. So kudos yeah. to the developers for you know not just you know for, for doing something surprising with it. That sounds yeah. much cooler than I first saw. I saw that and I was like, yeah, probably just gonna pass. But you yeah. you, you caught my eye. Well done. Cool. Alrighty, but right. I know uh, number three has caught uh, your eye, and this one's going to be huge, uh, and it's going to prove to the world that we are not done with roll and rights. Roll and rights are just getting started, folks. Roll and right haters, get comfortable. They're here to stay with our number three, Motor City. Yes. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad you put this on the list. Like, yes, yes, list yes, 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 yeah. yes. Um, from Ben Pitchback, Matt Riddle, also Adam Hill. Uh, but Ben and Matt did Fleet the Dice Game. And uh, more recently, they've done Three Sisters, which is another very hot, hot, hot roll and write. And this is going to be the next one. And unfortunately, I don't think there are any pictures of it on Board Game Geek. I, I think I looked it up. It was just a cover. Right. But yeah. uh, let's just go on ahead and say Purple Moose Plays. I don't know your channel, Purple Moose, but show me. Show me what you got. All righty. And uh, yeah, okay. this looks like a new roll and write from uh, Ben Pitchback and Matt Riddle. Multiple uh, pages, multiple pages that aren't just a bunch of spreadsheets, but pages doing completely different things. Honestly, this looks like Kanban the roll and write to me. It looks like there's mm. test lines. It looks like there's assembly lines. Um, it looks like there's some kind of dice drafting or maybe dice worker placement. I don't know much about this, but this looks very, very cool. And um, I love a roll and write. The only thing I love more than a roll and write is a really heavy, crunchy roll and write. Because generally, you think yeah. roll and write, you think just nice little, oh, Yahtzee or Yahtzee Plus type things. But I expect this is going to be deep and rich. Not going to replace Kanban on the heaviness factor, but it looks like it's got a fair bit of dice rolling and then assigning those dice to do actions and then doing all kinds of vehicle development. And uh, yeah, Kanban, I didn't think I was going to care about that subject matter. Honestly, I don't care about cars, but I found myself really yeah. pulled into the subject matter. It was really c- compelling. And so I expect this one will be too. And again, the, the design pedigree is untouchable. Ben and Matt yeah. are fast for, you know, becoming, and they've done a lot of great stuff over the years, but they are becoming yeah. the, uh, you know, the emperors of the roll and write space. This is a great one, two, three combo. Fleet the dice game, three sisters, and if all goes to plan, Motor City which is our number three. Yeah, they they're a wonderful design team, and I think this is gonna this is this falls right in line with those uh, other games you mentioned, Fleet and Three Sisters. Gonna be gonna be awesome. I can't wait to play this. Um, I you know we were, we were just talking about Three Sisters recently. I I just I love that game. It's a very crunchy roll and write, and Motor City is gonna be along those lines as well. Cool. All right, great choice for number three. But let's check out number two let's on our that. list. Let's check out number two. Number two is. Do, 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 do. Behexed, an unconventional deck building game. Okay. You you say unconventional, I say, ooh, that piqued my interest. <laughs> All and right. And this unconventional is from deck Smirk builder, and Arcane Combat. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you are playing as ma- uh, battle mages uh, in your, you're specializing in a certain magical discipline. And it's deck building, right? You have your uh, hand of spells. And your hand of spells is your defense and your currency. So okay. you're going to be sacrificing your currency and giving up your defense at the same time. So it's one of those, okay, how am I going to balance this out, right? And um, the cool thing is, once you get those new spells, they don't go into your discard pod. They go right into your hand. So okay. you can play them immediately. Okay. And, um, you know, I like that about it. And you're, it's interesting because one of the things I was um, looking at in the overview is... You're not really building, you're not trying to build up like victory points or resources in your deck. You're trying to build up the way you want to interact with the other players because certain spells are going to go better with other players or against other players. And I think that's oh. so fascinating. Yeah. And I am a uh, smirk and dagger. Their, their most recent game that I played was uh, the night cage, which was a really interesting take on tile laying games where you would lay tiles. But then, you know, we talked about this last year, you lay tiles, but then as the game progresses, you're actually taking tiles off the table. Right. right. So the, so the fact that they're uh, starting to look at, Hey, let's try something different with deck building here. I think that's worthy of checking out. And that's why it's our number two. Okay. Hexed an unconventional deck building game. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Who's the designer on it? 
Do you know? Uh, the designer? Oh, gosh. I Let me Or, or is, is, is it somebody quick. new? Uh, Kurt Covert, Greg, uh, Jonathan. I don't know any of these names. So it looks yeah, like it's a Kurt, new design team. Um, but yeah, no, that Kurt that sounds Covert really cool. Has been, yeah. He's, he was part of the... Uh, he's actually... Uh, Kurt Covert actually runs Smirk and Dagger, and he oh. also designs as well. Okay. So he's he's had his hands on a couple of those titles uh, at, at, for his company, and he's always great. And he's a super nice guy as well on top of that. But um, he's also designed uh, Cutthroat Caverns and... Um, what was the other... Oh, the one I was just talking about. Um, oh, uh, uh, Night Cage. And, yeah, and that's, Night, I think, Night the Cage. most interesting yeah. thing, the way you point it, because Night Cage approaches deck or you know tiling in a completely new way where you're equally fo- uh, you know tile removing and so he wants mm-hmm. to do the same thing i can see why i didn't look at it too close three player minimum game but what yeah, that means that's... they know what they're giving up they know how mm-hmm. much business they're giving up if they don't put the number two there or the number one and what that means yeah. is this must be an exceptionally strong entry for what you were talking about that interaction between players on a deep level because you have to have at least two mm-hmm. other people to interact with in different ways so that makes it more right. intriguing, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's, it really, it just caught my eye when you're like, you know, you think about, you know, a, a standard deck builders, you want resources, then you want to eventually get to those victory points. But here, you're actually thinking about what cards can I use against the other players. I, I think that's a really interesting twist. So that's why it's our number two, Behex, an unconventional deck building game. But we've got one final one to talk about. What is it? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We've got one more to go. And I... I feel like I've talked about this previously at some point on the show. Maybe like it was back when we were doing Essen previews or something like that. Um, But I have been stoked for this game for probably the better part of a year. So why don't I tell you what the name of it is? It's Frozen Frontier. And there is one reason. One reason and one reason only. Oh no, there's plenty of reasons. But publisher Cosmodrome Games. Uh, Cosmodrome Games is unstoppable at this point. Everything they do, uh, this Russian developer, uh, this Russian uh, you know group of, of young uh, designers have just been putting out amazing title after title after title. And uh, I mean, geez, if I were to uh, let's see, hold on a second, I don't want to do that. I just want to bring up Cosmodrome's uh, pedigree for a little bit. Smartphone Inc., Aquatica, Origins, First Builder, First Contact. Did you ever play First Contact? You wouldn't. Michelle would love it. Um, Ooh, okay. Yeah. I, uh, really, they are just on fire. Um, oh, the Escape Tales series; those were very popular as an all, uh, as a new take. Uh, Inuit, the Snow Folk, uh, um, yeah. Oh, so wow. a lot of really good stuff. This publisher, this group of developers, and so I think uh, this is a game uh, from an, one of their newer designers in the group. I think, but I am really intrigued by it uh, because. Oh, well, I've heard uh, from them. I mean, because I, I I have covered some of their games in the past, and uh, you know, and I and I had emails with them, and they say, oh, this is our best game to date. This this one, uh, forget about everything we've done up till now. Forget about your furnaces and all the rest of it. Uh, you know, because you know, all, all these Russian guys have come together to make this uh, really cool, cool game. Uh, now. It's kind of a downer. Uh, Earth is not doing so great. We've got to populate another planet very, very far away. And um, doing really big, heavy, meaty... Let's see, are there pictures? There must be pictures. I should show pictures. Uh, You know, uh, Euro-style worker placement. You know, dealing with the actual transport of people across the whatever the stellar distance is to get there. There's all these different planets we're working on. We're doing all these different kinds of... I mean, just looking at it... I mean, where's a picture of the board? I mean, this is a very oh busy board with a lot going yeah. on. And more wow. than anything else, I am attracted to this because of the pedigree, because uh, this promises to be their biggest, heaviest, crunchiest game to date. And they have not let me down so far. And, um, you know, I like really hard science fiction. Even if it's a little bit grim, it's about the end of the world as we know it, but hey, let's make a new world. But, um, yeah, I, I cannot wait to get my hands on number one on the list, Frozen Frontier. Okay. Yeah, I remember you talking about this during the Essen show. And yeah, it, it looks fantastic. Yeah. Wow. There were some great games yes. we talked about. Yes. I cannot wait for not just our top 10, but these, the other 14 that we talked about. Oh my gosh. A lot of good stuff coming out real yep. soon here, friends. Well, the question is though, folks, did you hear it? Did, um, did you do the time warp again? Did one of us say <laughs> it? And if so, what game was it that we were talking about? Because you need to, as a reminder, send the name of that game as the subject of an email to contest at rado.com so you can win a copy of the excellent, uh, and I'm sure uh, it's about to start on Kickstarter. Definitely keep an eye out for it. I am very, very impressed. And again, did I mention Gideon's Gamings? Did I? Uh, you did. Yeah. Yes. Yep. 
just, I mean, if you like, um, totally as an aside, if you like Marvel Champion, go check out Gideon's channel. You must. I mean, he should have exploded by now, considering how popular, and it's like really his focus. But when I saw he broke his focus to cover this, and when he dove so deep, I was like, yeah, there's a lot more than first meets the eye. And what meets the eye here, trying to make a dueling, um, you know, player versus player, uh, you know, game um, richer and more board game like, uh, jettisoning all of the you know the tropes of gotta get them all collectible boosters and all that, and just making a complete yep. deep rich game that's full of ready to do lots of interesting drafting right from the box. Uh, definitely keep an eye out for it, folks, uh, because I think it's going to be something special. And awesome. that's it. Oh my gosh. Well, I have a plane to catch. So um, yes. why don't you take us out yeah. and uh, <laughs> uh, and I'll just say uh, thanks everybody for watching. Yeah, okay. So, uh, friends, again, just one final reminder. Dice Tower West, if you're watching this on t uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, um, we're gonna we're on our way there. We're, we're mm -hmm. going to be there Wednesday through Sunday. Come say hi to us, and uh, you may get a freebie. Uh, if with purchase at uh, Gamer Glass, you get a, a little Rotto Everdell card. Or yep. if you see me and ask nicely, I'll give you a Tabletop Tonight button. Um, and uh, say hello. We'd love to meet you. And until then, uh, Richard, I am looking forward to meeting you, friend. Uh, it, and, it, um, it blows my mind. Um, it's, worlds it's are crazy, colliding, right? Jerry. Worlds, worlds are, are colliding. colliding. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, have uh, safe travels, my friend, and uh, I will see you there. All right. Uh, thank you, Ruel. Thanks for watching. And thanks uh, one more time to the show sponsor, World Breakers, coming to Kickstarter in March. Have a nice day, everybody. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye Boop. Okie right. dokie. We've got about 20 minutes, a little short of 20 minutes. All right, let's see. Um, did anybody... Whenever you need to get going. Yep, yep, yep. Did anybody throw any questions our way? Uh, Hi, everybody. Thing. We're in the post show now. Oh, okay. Let me, let me put that questions. R&R. &R um, okay. Safe. Uh, first question from Nazgoth. Will the live show on Friday at Dice Star West be streamed live as well? <laughs> you tell me <laughs> uh tbd to be determined uh nasgoth we um it depends on their their tech setup there we we don't know yet so sorry we don't have a firm answer on that yet okay um yeah i mean we see. would like to if that is possible yes. we will do it my bet is it's not. My bet that is going to be... I think the real question is, will it be filmable so that we can at least post it on the YouTube channel so that folks can see it after the fact? That's my hope. I, but I don't. we same. don't know where it's being filmed. We don't know what equipment will be available to us. So, I mean, we're playing it by ear. Yep, yep. Uh, Duck of Death asks, any other games that didn't make the cut? Um, oh, yes. Well, our... um, honestly, for me, no. Did you not hear the 14 yeah. games I had to walk through right from the get-go? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I think I think Ruel had a couple more, right? Uh, the the ones that I had, I, I'll tell you right now, you covered them all in the 14 before. Uh, Tamash, Tamashi, uh, Mercurial, Oak, and uh, Motor City, and Tidal Blades, uh, Rise of the uh, Elf Holders. Yeah, those, those are all the ones I was going to add. So yep. they were talked about already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, you, you, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be the... I think that's kind of the obvious. When we do other top tens, and we're like, oh, there's lots of other things to talk about. But when we do these Kickstarters, either we, we, we're we already covering it, or, well, if we're not covering yeah. it, we're interested in it. So it's kind of hard to pull extra stuff. Yeah, I couldn't find anything else. Um, yeah. Yeah, what's next? Okay, uh, Nazgoth, another... Any live events planned at Dice Tower West? Nazgoth, yes. Go oh. check out... Find, when you're there, there's an area called the 3C Con area. We're going to have uh, special tables that you can play games with uh, all kinds of different content creators uh, from us to the Brothers Murph to Paula Deming to all kinds of great people. Um, that's just running the entire time as Dice Tower West. You can find us. It'll, I don't know exactly where it is right now, but um, once you get to the convention, they'll have the signs up and everything. Yeah. I, so and I believe we'll have, if you go, there is a Dice Tower West dedicated website. And if you go there, one yes. of the tabs is Schedule. And it has a very robust scheduling system where you can say, okay, I'd like to sign up for this and that and the other thing, please. Yeah. So you can definitely check yeah. stuff out okay. there too. Yep. All right. Uh, Kabuki Kid. Uh, where is the secret word? LOL kidding, of course. Yeah. LOL. You know, I, did you say it? I, I missed it. Oh, yeah, I did. I did. Okay, good. Yeah. Good, good, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, folks, you know, if you want to know where the secret word is, you could always subscribe, correct? Yes, That's you can. Hey, let's remind everybody one more time. Subscription to um, Murata Runs Through on Twitch gives you all kinds of benefits. You can scroll down below to check them out. That includes just, if you're subscribed, whisper to me, hey, where was the secret word? I'll just tell you. 
after Ruel tells me, because I don't know where I was. Um, <laughs> I, I was just barely uh, staying alive after that rampant 14 uh, game rundown. I know. I had to do. You, you had a lot of, yeah, yeah you that had was a lot on your plate. Lot. That was a lot. <laughs> um, but, uh, now Scott asked, yeah. uh, uh, so, uh, Nasgoth, uh, Ruel, oh, I haven't yeah. seen a good looking Kickstarter episode with Becca for a while. Did you stop that soon? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, Nasgoth, it's, on? it's on hold right now. It's on hiatus. Okay. Um, uh, after we did the last season, uh, Beck and I and the uh, other producers were talking like, we want to redo the show. Um, it may not be bi-weekly. We're, we're still ramping up on that. And there's other things that we have planned uh, for good with the Good Time Society uh, that... Um, it's, it's all under it's all ongoing and uh here here's one thing i can say i'm gonna be on a gameplay episode real soon with becca and the crew there oh yeah uh, we play we actually yeah we actually played merchants of the dark road and we're gonna Ooh. see that you'll see that yeah good good game where yeah, do those things get game, filmed but... and hey folks are there any more questions remember you got to start your question with a question mark at the beginning if, you, if it shows up in yeah. the queue where do you film right. those things ruel i mean they're uh, in, like a really in, nice in la place. Yeah, is it a studio? studio in la yeah like um, a proper filming and, studio uh, the studio is uh, Becca's place right now. Oh, okay, okay. So she's basically yeah. made up a, a, a filming area kind of a thing. Yep. Right, okay. Yeah. It, it, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, so folks, again, if you want uh, questions, uh, first to uh, see them a little easier, just start your question with a question mark because there's things that I've missed here. Yeah, or maybe they're um, taking it easy on it because they know I, I got to hit the road, Jack. Um, yeah. So, okay, yeah, I oh, think, here, here's what, okay, looks like we're caught up. Folks, hopefully you enjoyed the show. We promise, I, I my apologies, um... Who was it? Uh, Nazgoth and Lord of Cardboard. Right off the bat, next week, we will be Trivial Pursuiting and Ruel Ranking and uh, whatever else might come up. Oh, wait a minute. Yes. One last question yes. here. Sa Sam asked, can we purchase Rado Everdale cards for people um, who can't uh, uh, Jen and I talked about it. Honestly, I did, I, I'd forgotten about the box. They were just kind of over there in a the corner. I'd had them for a while. And then when we were when you were talking about buttons, I like, oh, we could give those away at the convention. Yay. And um, and that was all I thought about it. Jen and I talked a little bit more. Um, and so what we're going to be doing probably, uh, she'll be rolling out um, very quickly, very soon. And and I'll mention it too, is that she's going to be throwing them in as uh, you know special gifts with purchase if you buy stuff off of her um, Etsy store. So if, nice. if uh, you know, so basically... Because we figured out how much they would cost to ship. Uh, we, first thing we want to do was, hey, let's ship one to every one of the people who backed on Patreon. And we realized, oh, that would be thousands of dollars. Okay, let's not do that. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, Jen figured out then the, the additional cost. It would, what she already pays to ship her gamer glass around the world, uh, she could absorb the cost to make it a little bit more expensive to be able to put these things in a nice safe container where they won't get mushed up. So, it hasn't been officially announced, but it's going to be pretty soon. Maybe probably after we get back from the convention, because we've just been too running around like chickens with their heads yeah. cut off. Uh, that if you buy anything uh, from Jen's uh, um, store... Or from our Etsy store, uh, we'll throw one of them in as well. That's the plan going forward. But we haven't worked out the particulars yet. Nice. Uh, which okay. And uh, I see Spitzka asked, uh, Gen Store, what's that about? All right, we're going to go back to the browser one more time. Let me uh, come back here. Uh, let's see. And, oh, but the browser has died. Oh, I probably minimized it. Oh, no. Oh, oh and remember, folks, uh, again, uh, it's, of course, we have no show notes right now, but if you watch this on YouTube, there will be a link to this page um, in the show notes if you would like to help donate, uh, you know, and, and try to hit this target to help folks in Ukraine. But yeah, I am just... I just dropped that link in chat as well, folks. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do, 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 hey, drop it right now. Do you have yeah. it? Yep. That's a good idea. Uh, uh, I don't know why I didn't think yeah. of that. That's kind of, you know what I should have? I should have the whole exclamation point charity and all that stuff, right? I don't know yeah, how to do yeah, any yeah. of that exclamation point stuff. I need to learn that stuff. I, I can show you how. It's super easy. All right. Well, in exchange, I, I can, I'll play I can actually Oak show you. you something. This is great. All right. I think if okay. you just do a Google search for, or no, not Jen. It'd have to be, that's the problem. Jen spells her name weird. Jennifer Ham. Or no, I wonder if you can do Gamer Glass. Gamer Glass Etsy store. Let's see if that comes up. I'm just trying to help people fish. Nope, that's gaming glasses. All right. She needs to work on her, what's it, her uh, OEM or her SEO, search algorithm SEO, optimization. Yeah. But anyway, it is Etsy.com. And um, let's say, I think it's slash shop slash Jennifer Ham Glass. I think that's what it is. L-A-S-S. -S. Yep, that's it. Jennifer Ham Glass. Or if you search for Jennifer, oh, I was, I was mixing it. It's Jennifer Ham Glass, not Gamer Glass. So, um, yeah, Etsy.com, search for Jennifer Ham Glass. She has all kinds of stuff. And she will be very soon saying, hey, if you buy any of this stuff, even the little googlies um, or some yeah, earrings yeah. or whatever, we will, if you request it, they'll probably have to have some kind of code to let, to, you know, to, for the people who are in the know to be able to get some of those. Um, 
Imagine them not in the plastic. So that is the plan, but we just haven't figured out the plan yet. The plan for this week is come up and say hi and buy something at the convention. The plan after that is use email and the internet to come up and say hi and buy something and you'll get one. Awesome. All Perfect. right. Okay. Um, let me see are there any other questions. Um, uh, Bing was asking about any oh. chance of seeing a Thomas is Wrong Part 2. <laughs> Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Before we go on, um, yeah, yeah. Rotto Focus. Hey, how about, folks, how about you just go right here? www.gamerglass.art. <laughs> the thing that is in my background in every single video I have done for years. <laughs> this right here. Go there. You will find Jen. <laughs> Durf. All right. Oh, perfect. Here. Sorry. I'm sorry. What was the question then? After uh, I'm done any chance of seeing a Tom is Wrong Part 2 out of Dice Tower West? People really <laughs> want that. Tom is Wrong. Oh, oh, the, yeah. I mean, I, I, if, if Tom wants to do something like that, that's cool. Um, and yeah. hey, if you folks want to see it, somebody's just got to pay those Rotto points and request a uh, yep. another top three. And there maybe it it'll is. happen. I, I, I can certainly... I, I have well more than three I can name. <laughs> Okay, uh, I think that's it for questions. So we've got, yeah, you're you're going to be getting ready to go on a plane, and I think we're good to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so we just have to raid somebody, because yeah. the show always goes on. So who should we raid, Ruel? Who do you like? Yeah, I was just, yeah, I, I, I don't. Uh, it's Monday. It's, everything's thrown off to me. I don't know who's oh. on, what's going on. Uh, let's see. The losers are on. Oh, the always losers is always the there. Loses. Um, how about? Apuk23, they're playing... Let me see what they're playing. Board games. Oh, they're doing Gaslands. Gaslands? What's that? The the car... It's like a miniature car game. Like, I think that's... Well, well I'm looking at an ad right now. Let me give, oh, okay. give me two seconds. They are playing... Yeah, they oh, they're painting. They're painting the cars. So Gaslands, it, it's just a... It's a book of rules where you can uh, play a miniature game of car car wars, basically. Okay. But you soup up, uh, you basically get Hot Wheels and you soup them up and you paint them. And so it's like a lo really low cost way of getting into miniature uh, gaming by buying a bunch of Hot Wheels and blowing up your uh, buddies there. Okay. Um, so they're just painting. I don't know if they, maybe we'll, let's look for someone who's actually playing some Let's find a game. Give yeah. Game. Oh, okay. Our friends Meeple Grande, they are playing. Oh, they're doing a 24 hour stream. I don't know what they're Ooh. playing though. They're five hours into this thing. They're, so they're tired. Oh, they're playing. They are playing. Is that Three Sisters? Oh, no. Uh, Dinos, Aurora and Wright. The oh, Island yeah. I, that is one I definitely want to play. That sounds good. Yeah. Let's give them a okay. go. All right. Yeah. Uh, People grande, folks, folks. Tell them Rado and Ruel said hi and send our regards. And, and we know what they did. Tell them all of those things <laughs> um, when we start the raid. Which I should have pushed the button while I was doing all that. Then I could have had a really smooth transition, but I still. We have, this is the episode thirty, and I still don't have this down. But I believe yeah, it's, we it's are part raiding. Of the charm. Raid, raid, yes. raid. Go, go, go. And it looks like it went. Boy, it totally blew right. up last week or the last time I tried to raid you. Yeah, that's what I heard. Like, oh well, gosh, it, it just wasn't it just, working. For no reason, it canceled itself, and then it refused. Oh. I couldn't do it with the interface. I couldn't do it with direct commands. And I was like, well, okay, I guess if I cancel and then restart a show really quick, I will, I'll still hold on to some people. And eventually, I mean, I just I, I just freaked out for so long that I guess whatever wh whatever it was fixed itself, and then I tried yeah. it one more time, and then it worked. But yeah, that was very so frustrating. Weird. But this yeah. one went better. Just and weird. it looks like yeah, they this are one. on their yep. way. Okay. Okay, yep, people are there. Cool, I gotta cool, go cool. take a shower okay. and shave. And uh, we'll be playing yeah, Oak very soon, I'll, I'll see you in Vegas. All right. All right, bye -bye. take care. Bye.